2266 score. Game two of our doubleheader. We're just minutes away from taking you down to the Mid South Coliseum in Memphis. And we'll be taking a look at Memphis State playing for the first time without Sylvester Gray and Marvin Alexander declared ineligible. Also in that game, we understand Dwight Boyd has a hand injury. Three key Tiger players won't be in action. There might be number 19 coming in, but Bradley with the nation's top scorer certainly, and Hersey Hawkins will certainly be the favorite in this game. Number four, North Carolina, a winner tonight in Charlotte. That game played in Charlotte and a breeze over the Citadel, 98 to 74. Also tonight, Syracuse advancing the Fandango on St. Bonaventure. They led this one at one point by 45 points. It's now 83 to 44. Miami of Florida, final score, having defeated St. Thomas, 71 to 47. The Hurricanes, a very consistent effort tonight. Tennessee at the uh, UT uh, Center in front of the uh, big crowd. The Catamounts coming in. Tennessee winning over Western Carolina, 87 to 69. Bobby Pascal's Bulls of South Florida now in the second half are leading Central Florida. That is a 70 to 57 partial score. We'll be checking other scores throughout the entire evening. So Wichita State with the victory over the governors of Austin P, 72 66. Next up, the nation's leading scorer in Hersey Hawkins. We'll be taking a look at him in action. You've just seen Austin P and Wichita State next off the Memphis Tennessee, Bradley and the number 19 Memphis State Tigers. Dip into the holiday spirit with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets in festive 9 and 20 piece packs. Tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange and sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in before holiday McNuggets are gone. Introducing the G-Shock 5200 watch from Casio. The sports watch that's ready for action with a built-in shock absorber. It's tough, so tough, this G-Shock can take a slap in the face. And not even flinch. The G-Shock 5200, just one of Casio's water-resistant sports watches. It's one tough watch to beat. From the Great Wall to Wall Street, one airline brings our nation's business together throughout the U.S. and 13 foreign lands. United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. It is not often that Memphis State would be considered a uh, underdog on the home court, the Mid-South Coliseum. That is probably the case tonight. Bradley, the Braves coming in out of the Missouri Valley Conference with a 3-0 record, sporting the nation's number one score in Hersey Hawkins. By the way, at halftime of this game, we'll be taking a close-up look at Hawkins. But uh, because of Memphis State, we all know that Dwight Boyd has the hand injury. He may or may not be playing tonight. We'll learn more about that also. And Sylvester Gray and Marvin Alexander, having signed early with uh, sports agent Jim Abernathy, they are ineligible. This is the first game they shall be missing. Let's get more on tonight's game from Fred White and Larry Conley. Gentlemen. And now you're looking live at a sold-out Mid-South Coliseum in Memphis, Tennessee. Tonight, the Tigers of Memphis State take on the Bradley Braves, an undefeated basketball team out of the Missouri Valley. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred White. Our analyst tonight is Larry Conley. And Larry, this Memphis State ball club has had to survive some blows the last couple of years. Now again this week, another major blow with the revelation that the signings of Sylvester Gray and Marvin Alexander have rendered them ineligible for the time being. Well, it's going to be very difficult for Larry Finch to put together a winning program with the loss of those two key players. They're outstanding athletes, and unfortunately, we don't know what the committee's going to do right now, but it looks very, very bad for Memphis State. Memphis State, of course, will appeal tonight. Larry Finch's job is to get a ball club out here ready to play against an excellent basketball team, and quite often in these situations, you've seen it before, kids will rise to the occasion and give you a heck of a game. Well, I think the two that have to really rise is, uh, is Perry and Gibson. They're the two guys, the guards that had such great games this weekend against Missouri. They're going to have to pick it up and carry it again. One's a freshman and the other one's a sophomore. you got to look for youngsters to bring you on right now. And on the other side of the court, you have a Bradley ball club that really loves to run, led by an All-American guard in Mercy Hawk. He's averaging 41 points a game. He's one of the greatest scorers in college basketball. In fact, he is the leading scorer coming back in college basketball. You're going to see a great Bradley team, and they're averaging 96 points a game. Don't blink your eyes, you may miss a basket. Again, the matchup here in the Mid-South Coliseum tonight is Memphis State and Bradley. We're standing by right now, back to Bob. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. As we said, not very often that the Bradley Braves, or I should say Memphis State, on the home court would be an underdog. Bradley with Hawkins coming in tonight, and of course Memphis State very undermanned. That is the case tonight. More on Hawkins at halftime. Also more on the unfolding problems again at Memphis State. We've got a ball game, game two of our doubleheader. We get to it in a moment. We're down to the wire in the Johnson Family Coliseum. It's VCR basketball. Johnson passes into the key and gets the VCR card. He hits the VCR, and the NBA pros hit an alley-oop for two. Randolph inbounds it, turns over a VCR card, and the NBA pros give him a slam a jam. Johnson inbounds it, and it's called for charging. Get the VCR basketball game and play at home with the NBA pros. He hits it, and the Randolph win VCR basketball. Get the official VCR basketball, football, and hockey games at a store near you. When your sore throat burns, every second counts. I'm counting. You want relief, and you want it now. I want this pain out of here. That means chloroseptic, because only chloroseptic has the powerful anesthetic phenol that penetrates nerve endings for relief in seconds. Relief so fast, the moment you feel it, we'll stop this commercial. there are tough customers. Conica makes tough copiers. Conica tough means quality. Copiers that copy when you want. Full featured copiers that perform with amazing reliability. Conica's royal copiers are sold and serviced across America and Canada. So if you're a tough customer, see the full line of Conica's tough royal copiers and pick on someone your own size. Introducing the G-Shock 5200 watch from Casio. The sports watch that's ready for action with a built-in shock absorber. It's tough, so tough, this G-Shock can take a slap in the face. And not even flinch. The G-Shock 5200, just one of Casio's water-resistant sports watches. It's one tough watch to beat. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Bradley and Memphis State, brought to you by Michelob. So exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. Before we go to Memphis, let's quickly check some scores. Eastern Michigan, the Hurons favored in this game in Ypsilanti and leading Michigan State in the second half now, 51-49. to Houston, a favorite on the road, trailing against Minnesota by three points. That game being played in um, uh, Williams Arena. Penguins and the Chippewas keeping our close eye on this game. Central Michigan with a large lead now late in that game in the second half. Halftime, the Ramblers of Loyola of Illinois leading in Northwestern by the count of 28-26. Kenny Miller, the nation's leading rebounder in action tonight for Loyola. Let's take a look now at the starting lineups. Let's go to the Mid-South Coliseum and join Fred White, Larry Conley for tonight's game. Gentlemen. The Mid-South Coliseum is, as always, sold out for tonight's battle between Memphis State and Bradley. Welcome to our viewers on ESPN. We're set to meet the starting lineups for the Tigers and the Braves. Let's join public address announcer, Fred Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mid-South Coliseum and tonight's game between the Bradley Braves and the Memphis State Tigers. Introducing the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the Bradley Braves. At one forward, a 6'7 senior from Havana, Illinois, number 40, Trevor Trippi. The other forward, a 6'5 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Greg Jones. At center, a 6'8 sophomore from Springfield, Illinois, number 53, Luke Jackson. At a guard, 6'3 senior from Chicago, number 33, Mercy Hawkins. Out of the other guard, a 5'11 junior from Chicago, number 12, Anthony Manuel. And the head coach of the Braves, Stan Albeck. Now, oh, starting for the Memphis State University Tigers. At one forward, a 6'9 junior from Memphis, number 43, Steve Feller. The other forward, a 6'6 junior from Memphis, number 41, Rodney Douglas. At 
center is 6'9", senior from Memphis, number 42, Dwayne Bailey. At a guard, 6'3", sophomore from Memphis, number 14, Cheyenne Gibson. Out of the other guard, six foot freshman from Memphis, number 34, Elliot Perry. And the head coach of the Tigers, Larry Perry. So there you have them, the starting lineups for both ball clubs here tonight. Bradley unbeaten at 3-0, Memphis State in at 4-1. We're set for basketball from the Mid-South Coliseum. We'll be back right after this. ESPN and Thrifty Car Rental World Tour Sweepstakes want to take you to Hawaii in February. Ten lucky couples will go to Honolulu for an all-expense-paid week of sun and fun, including tickets to the NFL Pro Bowl. To enter, watch NFL Primetime Sunday nights and NFL Monday Monday nights to catch the winning slogan. Pick up your entry form at participating Thrifty Car Rental locations or write the slogan on a card with your name and address and mail to World Tour Sweepstakes, Post Office Box 912, Ridgely, Maryland, 2 if you're an ESPN and 50 Car Rental World Tour winner, Continental Airlines will fly you and the guests to Honolulu, where you'll enjoy a week of sun, surf, and Pro Bowl festivities. Whenever you travel, use Thrifty's convenient service in over 650 locations worldwide. Experience the driving luxury of Chrysler cars. Thrifty, near the airport, not near the price. So send your entry in today and join the World Tour in Hawaii. On the right, in charge of proceedings here. Again, as Larry told you in our pregame, it's going to be a very quick basketball game. And very interesting watching the crowd here in the Mid-South Coliseum. Every game here since 71, 72 has been sold out. As you look at the series record, it seems like every time something happens here in Memphis, the fans just circle the wagons a little bit tighter. Boy, they hang with this program. This is a very loyal crowd, Fred, and the one that's been this way since 1971-72. They've been sold out for a long time here as we look at tonight's matchup. Today, the one you want to watch here, keep an eye on Anthony Manuel. He's averaging 10 assists a game, and he and Hawkins have got to square off against the two young guards from Memphis State, Elliot Perry on one side, and then on the other side, you've got Chai and Gibson. Percy Hawkins averaging 41.7 points a ball game. Larry, talented guards from Memphis State. Young, you have to wonder if they're ready to face the likes of the Hawkins and Manuel. We're about to find out. Perry, the freshman with the basketball, and Bradley, man to man. Down inside, they go in a hurry. Steve Ballard lost it. The Memphis State saves it. Rodney Douglas with the basketball. Bradley opens up in their man-to-man -man defense. Cheyenne Gibson against Hawkins took him to the circle, couldn't get the shot. Bailey Douglas Perry. Manuel out defending against Perry. Douglas against Trippy. Bailey kicked it right back out. Perry right back with Bailey with a turnaround jump shot. Drills it. Dwayne Bailey gets the first two, and Memphis State breaks on top. And here comes Bradley back in a hurry, and Hawkins couldn't quite handle it. Well, I talked with Stan Albeck today, who was the coach of Bradley, and he told me, he says, if I see a press, 2-2-1, two, two, watch us throw over the press. We're not going to wait. If that ball comes through the net, and they decide they're going to throw a press on us, we're going to get rid of it and get up the floor. Both coaches, interestingly enough, in this ball game, coaching at their alma mater. Lynch, a great player here. Stan Albeck played at Bradley. There's Perry, the freshman from long range. Wall drop, and the rebound cleared by Luke Jackson. Look at Hawkins come flying to the goal. Great dish on the far side, and the shot good by Greg Jones in the game tie. That ball's like a magnet. When he's got his hands on it, it will attract white jerseys. A good pass by Hawkins. Douglas starts the drive, pulls up, shoots, and hits. Rodney Douglas has two. And Memphis State is going to have to the base by going quickly themselves. Oh. Hawkins fouled at the other end. I'm telling you, you got to get ready because they're going to catch you when it comes through the net and they're going to run it full court. Ballard, a 6'9 junior from Memphis. Junior college transfer picked up the first foul in the ball game. And Hersey Hawkins at the line. He has hit 40 out of 42 free throw attempts this year including the last 19 straight. The Valley Player of the Year last year and the leading returning scorer in the nation this year. Larry Finch on the Memphis State bench. Tonight, 
That may be the longest Bradley takes between shots tonight. <laughs> Two free throws. Bradley comes out with that pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, full court. Douglas handles it in the middle. He got it to Perry. Perry off the heel of the rim. And trying to save it, the ball is out of bounds. Interesting, Larry, I think what Larry Pinch is doing, knowing that his kids are probably in a bit of a shock over the happening this week, right now he's just turned them loose and said, hey, go play with them. Well, I think that's what they've got to do. But this Bradley club, and they're going to go man-to-man -man on this trip down the floor, is a very good offensive club. They're averaging, as I said, 96 points a game. They will put it up right now. Hawkins from three, off the rim. Trevor Trempe grabs the rebound, shoots it back outside. Manuel Trempe, he's a good three-point shooter, and he drilled it. Trevor Trempe had taken 14 shots this year coming into this ball game, 11 of them from three-point range, and he hits a three right here. It may not have been the longest shot in the Mid-South Coliseum, but it was certainly the highest. Bradley up by three in the early going, 17.54 left in first half action here. Rodney Douglas against Trempe. Gibson from the top of the circle. And Perry, the freshman, saves the long rebound right back to Gibson. Douglas near the lane, left hands it up short. And Trempe had the rebound, took it to the floor, and he's immediately tied up. Great, if there's an area where Memphis State is going to miss Alexander and Gray, it's going to be on that backboard. They need that rebounding strength, and they don't have it. And Bailey's going to have to do a number, as is Ballard and Douglas, to get in there and fight Bradley for those rebounds. You saw the arrow on the alternate possession rule pointing to Bradley, so the Braves keep the basketball. Trempe was open from three, takes it down inside. Jones double, pump fake. The shot doesn't go. Percy Hawkins has it in the paint. And now back up Jones, and he's going to get it. Good job by Craig Jones. Heavy traffic, got the rebound, and got it back and up and in. Bradley up 9-4 in the early going here in Memphis tonight. 17-11 left in first half action. Gibson off balance, gets Ballard. Now Perry alone at the baseline. Tip try by Bailey won't go. Perry from the deep corner. Boy, twice he hesitated on the shot. Now Gibson goes at it and gets it. Good pass by Perry. He missed a couple of shots down there and got a little reluctant to put it up, and he got it back to Gibson, who got it. Now Hawkins for three. Off the front of the rim, and Ballard and Jones battling, and Jones is going to be whistled for the personal foul. First foul on Bradley. Watch it again. Hersey Hawkins letting it go from about 22 feet. Front of the rim. It comes off on the side. Good rebounding position by Ballard right there, and you see the foul committed by Bradley and Greg Jones. Memphis State down by three. Cheyenne Gibson, a sophomore, to Perry, the freshman. He's going to launch one from the deep corner too strong. Now Bailey with a strong offensive rebound, sticks it back. Wayne Bailey has four, and the Tigers within one. You notice how many of those rebounds are kicking long? A lot of those shots that Memphis State's taking is kicking long, and it's enabling them to get a lot of long rebounds. Trempe wide open for three. Trevor Trempe now has taken 16 shots this year, 13 of them from three-point range. Going to be a charging foul. Bradley's going to get the basketball back with a four-point lead intact here. I'd say both of these clubs love to get up and down the floor. Right now, I'd say this Temple probably favors Bradley. Yeah, you would think Memphis State might want to slow the ball down and take a little bit more time, but it doesn't look as if they're going to do that. They want to push the ball up the floor. They've got some quickness, too, particularly at that guard position right now. Elliott Perry and Cheyenne Gibson, both outstanding speed. That foul was on Steve Ballard, by the way, his second. You saw Russell Young check into the lineup, and Ballard sits down for Memphis State. Bradley with the basketball, up four points in the early going. Manuel? Perry is really hawking, hawking. And he got a three-second violation. Bradley had a man in the lane too long. The Braves turn it over. So Memphis State gets it back, down four. Stan Albeck looking on along the Bradley bench. I asked him about playing in here. He says, heck, I used to come in here in the old ABA days. And Memphis had an ABA team when I was in here coaching. The Tams? Yeah, right. Douglas in the paint. Jump shots up. Off the rim, no good. And look at Perry, the freshman. Did he make the save? He did. What a tremendous move along the baseline from Elliott Perry. So we're talking about guys six feet going in there amongst the six sixes, six seven, and six eights. He comes down with a rebound. They got the ball back. That's a good little freshman guard. I won't say freshman. He had to sit out last year. He's back in as a sophomore this year. He's a prop 48. Ball on the floor. Picked up by Hersey Hawkins. Hawkins across the left floor line. Now Manuel takes the jumper from the paint. It's in and out and stays. And Manuel has two. But I want to correct myself. That was not him. He was. He is a freshman. Cheyenne Gibson was a prop 48. He is the sophomore. Gibson takes the baseline. Gets the layup good. 
Cheyenne Gibson now has four. He blew right by Manuel like he had his feet nailed to the floor. Now the trap for the Memphis defense. Manuel trying to get rid of it, throws it long, picked off by Jones. 14 to 10, Bradley. Trempe from three-point range again, and he is three for three for three-point range. Trevor Trempe has nine points in this contest. He's averaging eight a ball game. Hersey Hawkins does not have a field goal yet. 15-12 left in first half action, and Bradley up by seven now. The state looks like he'll be a little bit more patient with the basketball this time. Perry. Young. Russell Young has two. A 6'5 freshman from LaGrange, Arkansas. Trippy. The crowd gets a little bit nervous when Trippy gets his hands on the ball now. They want somebody on him. Boy, he can shoot. Hersey Hawkins working in the paint. Shots up and good. His first field goal of the night. Hersey Hawkins has four. 19-12 Bradley with 14-35 left in the first half. Kind of floated that shot up there. Didn't really press it. Just kind of worked his way through and got it up and just floated it to the back. Hawkins defending against Cheyenne Gibson now. Douglas kicked by Trempe out of bounds. Memphis State basketball. And we have a timeout taken here in the Mid-South Coliseum. The break comes with 14-25 left in first half action. Bradley leading Memphis State 19-12. And we'll be right back. Millions of miles and millions of cars, more of them every year. They're riding on gentle motor oil, that's what I hear. Every year, people like racing champion Big Daddy Don Garlitz rely on the protection and quality of Kendall motor oil. Don Garlitz and Kendall motor oil, year after year. Kendall, protection worth its weight in gold for more than a hundred years. Still no work. Recently, 10 best-selling latex paints were brought together in an independent test to take the guesswork out of finding a quality flat wall paint. Hot, huh? Each was tested no. on the toughest measurement of all, scrub resistance. The winner? Glidden Spread Satin. Thank you very much. <laughs> New improved Glidden Spread Satin. It outscrubbed them all, and it's on sale now. Doc! Who came in second? Does it really matter? Glidden, your paint should be this good. Memphis Nissan dealers say go Tigers by passing along special factory incentive savings on top of end-of-the-year sale prices to Memphis State fans who purchase a Nissan van this week. And Bradley is open a 19 to 12 lead over Memphis State here. Larry, Memphis State right now, hard pressed to find some offense. Well, what they used to do when they had Martin Alexander, Sylvester Gray in that lineup, they got the ball down deep inside. Boy, there's a guy they like having back in that lineup. Dwight Boyd has been out with a broken hand, wearing sort of a protective, uh, looks like a glove almost. He's got on his left hand there. They've been working on him, trying to rehabilitate him. Good to see him back. Manuel in the lane, back to Hawkins. Paid away, jump shot. Oh, what good. a great move by Hawkins. Six points, Hersey Hawkins. Nine point lead now to Bradley. Their biggest of the night. Boyd at the baseline. That glove he's wearing where he has a golf glove that's had the fingers cut out of it and a pad inserted in it. Like a Michael Jackson glove. Yes. <laughs> well, they've got to be hoping here in Memphis that he can come out singing a song. Boyd makes a move on Hawkins, puts up the jump shot. No good, but he was fouled. Hersey Hawkins draws his first foul. Team foul number two on Bradley. Memphis State's been whistled for two. Watch it again. Dwight Boyd right here taking his first shot in many, many weeks. Just missed it, but he drew a foul from Hawkins. 13.53 left in first half action here, and Dwight Boyd will go to the free throw line. Boyd, a 6'3 senior from Kirby High School in Memphis, 10 for 10 at the line this year. And nothing but net that time. An excellent guard for this Memphis State ball club. In fact, they're going to be very deep at the guards this year, right? And they may end up having to play a lot of them, too. I think they'll go to them. The three-guard offense for a while. Dwight Boyd hits both the free throws. Now it's a 
seven-point lead to Bradley. Bailey sits down, and in the lineup now from Memphis State, Brett Mudd, a 6'10 junior from Jackson, Tennessee. A transfer from Bethel College, Trevor Trempe. Down in the lane, Hawkins said pass by Hawkins. Good penetration. Well, he took everybody with him when he went and wound up drawing the foul. Fred, the Bradley players will tell you this, that they love to get the ball in the hands of this young man because he will dish it off as well as take the shot. And right there, you saw him trying to get the ball over to the other side right there on a good pass to Greg Jones. He just couldn't quite get it done. Hersey Hawkins, a true All-American. He's an outstanding player. Not just off the bench, drew the foul. Bradley, 3-0 this year. Second in the Missouri Valley last year, the champion year before last. Hawkins now with seven points. Again, he's averaging 41.7 points a game. Bradley, five times has been in the NCAA tournament in their history, 15 times in the NIT. And he was fouled, and a bad foul it was by Greg Jones, his second personal foul. Yeah, you got that call right. That was not a smart foul by Jones. Douglas already had it. No way he was going to stop this shot. He should have just let him go ahead, jam it through there, and get out of the way, and get it when it comes through. Got him right on the arm. Good look by Gibson. Down the floor. When you're getting pressed, look down the floor. You may find some friends down there. All right, what happens, one thing on that play, you come dangerously close to an intentional foul, which could result in a six-point play. That would give them two free throws and the ball back. It didn't happen that time. Three-point play, though, by Rodney Douglas, and suddenly Memphis State within six points of Bradley with 13-32 left in the first half. Memphis State staying in their man-to-man -man defense. Manuel for three, off the heel of the rim, while slapped on the rim. Jackson with a turnaround jump shot, won't fall. And the rebound claimed by Boyd. You know Boyd would like to make something happen right here with the offense. On the dribble against Percy Hawkins. Still hunting for it. See, that's where they look inside when they had the big guys. Now they've got to kick it back out. There's Young, the freshman. I'll tell you what, they keep shooting like that, they won't have to worry about it. Starting to pick it up now. Memphis State down nine, now back within four. Anthony Daniel. Percy Hawkins drawing a crowd. He had four white jerseys. Tripper lets it fly for three. Doesn't get it. A race for the basketball. It's out of bounds to Memphis State. And the Tigers have fought their way back in this thing. Substitutions now. Ronald McLean coming on the floor for Memphis State. Jackson's going to sit down now for Bradley. And they have fellow Powell in the game. 41 left in the first half. Memphis State down four to Bradley. Good stack offense down low. Gibson going one on one. Trying to draw the foul and gets the shot down. He didn't get the foul, but he got the basket. Pretty smart maneuver, and now it's a 23-21 ball game. Bradley up two. Fred, you like the way Gibson play? I, I really like the way he plays. I do. Anthony Manuel lost his man. Got the jump shot down. Manuel has four. I like the way Manuel plays, too. <laughs> There's some good guards in this ball game. Gibson, bounce pass low. Boyd goes to work over Hawkins. Blocked in there. Picked off by Powell, who just came off the bench to make the block. Daniel to Trempe to Manuel. The penetration, and now it's going to be a charge. Anthony Manuel called for his first personal foul. Bradley turns it over with 12-0-1 left in the first half and a four-point lead, and another brave substitution coming up. Fred, that's a situation right there where Manuel had the shot from 18 to 20 feet, decided to take it in to try to dish it off. He had nowhere to go with that ball, got in the air, committed the charging foul. You look at Stan Albeck go back to the bench. Manuel should have taken that shot instead of trying to go down the middle. Jerry Thomas in the lineup now for Bradley. Greg Jones is going to take a break. Memphis State on the attack, down four. Perry to McLean. The left of the high post. McLean can shoot from long range. Now the ball knocked out of there, picked up by McLean. Perry, the freshman. Those are corrective glasses he's wearing, by the way. Corrective goggles. He wears contacts, but says he's just more comfortable playing with those glasses on. Munt, turnaround jump shot off the front of the rim. Strong rebound by Young, and he's been fouled by Jerry Thomas. And the Tigers really going to work on the offensive boards right now. Russell Young got up there. There's another freshman out there on the floor playing. A lot of, a lot of good young players on this Tiger club. A break here in the action with 11.29 left in the first half. The policy, and it's now Bradley leading Memphis State by four. 
Hi. Hi. I'm looking for presents for my husband and son, and I've seen shirts, ties, books, records. But you know, they love sports. There is a perfect present for guys like that. It's Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. America's number one sports magazine. It gives them 55 weeks of great sports coverage, including special issues and the annual swimsuit issue. This year, they'll also get the 88 Olympic Preview Edition. And you'll get SI at the Christmas sale price. Over 60% off the cover price. A sale before Christmas? And no crowded stores. No crowds? Just call their toll-free Christmas hotline for 55 issues of Sports Illustrated at the Christmas sale price. Three monthly payments of $15.99 each. You won't even be billed till next year. You even get a card for under the tree. Just call toll-free 1-800-274-5300. I'm sold. <laughs> Where's the phone? Uh, over there. What's that number? 1-800-274-5300. I know what I'm getting my boyfriend. And my dad. Number nine, Syracuse, a laugher by 43 over St. Bonaventure tonight. Keith Hughes at 19, the Orange are now 7-2. and two. Let's get back to Mid-South. Fred? Four-point lead to Bradley here with 11.29 left in the first half. Bradley shooting 56% from four. Memphis State 45% at this juncture. Larry Finch has seen his ball club come back. Larry Conley, they were down nine early. And hit Memphis State with a quick burst after Dwight Boyd came in the ball game. Yeah, he kind of picked him up a little bit, but also I think the other part of it was Trevor Trimby sort of cooled off too. He hit those three or four three-point shots right there in a row. I think it was three. Three, three quick ones. Yeah, three quick ones, and uh, that got him a big jump of nine points. And now Memphis State's gotten back there within four. Hunt and find the shot back to Perry. Quick move, flashes to the circle, the jumper off the hill, and the rim. He gets his own rebound. Well, he has a nose for the ball, doesn't he? He just gets uh, McLean for three. Ronald McLean, a 6'8 freshman with excellent range, is three out of four from three-point range this year. Fred, sometimes you can throw those freshmen out there, or in this situation, anybody who's out there who hasn't played a lot for Memphis State, they don't have anything to lose. No one expects them to perform well against a good Bradley club, and they've played well so far. But Bradley, again with that one-point lead. Boyd was just called for holding Mercy Hawkins as he cut through the lane. First foul on White Boyd. Team foul number four on Memphis State. Emmanuel has an interesting physique. You know, he's got the size. He's right around 5'11", 6 feet, and he's a very stocky individual, very strong. Muscular point guard, Mercy Hawkins, quick move in the lane. <laughs> he got it up and down. Mercy Hawkins now has 10 points. He's done that sort of quietly. Boyd, quick move at the other end, answers with an air ball, and Manuel picks it off the floor. Back comes Bradley with a three-point lead in the ball. Nice pass. Oh, great feed down inside, and Thomas gets two out of it. Gary Thomas has two points. Hawkins with a good feed on light. Boy, he makes some things happen when he gets the ball in the paint, doesn't he? Well, that's the reason these, this club likes for that basketball to be in his hands, because he'll make things happen. McLean at 6'8", flashes the pace line. The shot no good, and it's out of bounds. It'll be Memphis State basketball. Anthony Manuel got a hand on it, could not hold it. Watch it again. Good move by McLean. It's kind of leading interference. Somebody led through there, and he just followed, went up and laid it off the glass a little bit too hard. Powell almost with a rejection. You know, Powell led the Missouri Valley last year in, in uh, shots, blocks. He's an outstanding player coming off the bench. Perry, the freshman, outside now. <laughs> Bailey from the top of the circle. Good. Dwayne Bailey has a half dozen points. He had only scored a dozen in the first five games this year. He has six tonight. They're asking for help from him. He's given it to him so far. Memphis yeah. State back into a man-to-man -man defense. Now Manuel handling it out top. Got it to Thomas. Thomas shot in and out. Rebound scraped off there by Bailey. Here comes Perry. Memphis State down three. 9.44 left in the first half. Bradley cooling off a little bit right now. The Braves open hot. And having a little bit of trouble finding the range right now. Perry works against Manuel. Top of the circle, boy. You know, Memphis State taking a little bit more time, too, on their shot selection. McLean. You remember, the more, the more minutes you handle the basketball, the less minutes the other team gets. It's a good defense, isn't it? There's McLean from outside. Two points. Ronald McLean has five now. One point lead, Bradley. 9.08 left in the first half, and Bradley turns it over. Memphis State has a chance now to grab the lead for the first time since the opening moments of the game. 
Turnovers right there. Bradley with four. Memphis State with but two. Pretty well played game. Rodney Douglas will check back into the Memphis State lineup. Look at Perry go against Manuel, but got in the air and had nowhere to go and lost the ball. And Hawkins, look at the quick outlet pass. Yeah. Slam dunks it. Oh, how about that for Powell? Good run out right there. Powell and Thomas leading the charge, and there were no white jerseys back. Donald Powell's first two points of the night, a 6'8 senior from Nowata, Oklahoma. He's the third leading scorer in this Bradley court. He does have coming off the bench. Boyd, great pass to the baseline, and Bailey had it stripped out of his hands out of bounds. Boy, nice job by Manuel defensively that time. He recovered, got deep, and got the ball slapped away. Watch Manuel recover from the wing position right here. Look at the pass. Bailey starts to go up, and he slaps it out of his hand. Outstanding play by Anthony Manuel. Rodney Douglas back in the lineup now for Memphis State. Russell Young sits down. The freshman taking a breather. Perry, another freshman, works against Manuel. Now they had Boyd. McLean had the screen for him. Bar Boyd buries the jump shot. Four points for Dwight Boyd, his first field goal. That's his shooting hand, and he seems to be getting the ball up and down pretty easily. Memphis State, very looking at the move by Hawkins. He was fouled by Dwayne Bailey at the baseline, first on Bailey. Memphis State looks a little more comfortable with this game right now, we think. Well, I, you know, they're just down one right now. Watch Hawkins do this. Watch his first step. Boom, right there. Good crossover. Baseline, got inside, went right by Boyd. And Boyd is not a slow player. You know what makes quickness? First step. Very first step. If you're, if you're quick and you can get that first step, whether it's a crossover or, or just a drop step, and you get by that defender, just a half a step, you can go. And Hersey Hawkins may be as good as anybody in the country at that. Hawkins now 5 for 5 with the line in this game. He's at 24 straight. And 45 out of 47 attempts this year. But he's just a machine at the free throw line. He's been in the line a lot, too. Boyd answers with two points at the other end, and Dwight Boyd has a half dozen. He's given this ball club a lift spiritually, I think, among other things, Larry. He's also helped on the other end, and that's the points. <laughs> yes. Trempe back outside to Manuel. Good ball move by Bradley. They got it in the hands of the right man right there. Good look inside to Powell. Powell looking for the jump shot. It's going to be called for the walk. And that's the state with a chance to grab weight again. 33-32. Bradley with the lead at the moment. And we have a break in the action again in Memphis. With seven minutes and 50 seconds left in first half action, Bradley leading Memphis State by one. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Santa, can you bring me a zebra? I wish I could have a pony. I would like to fly. I wish that I could be a star in the sky for everybody to be nice and be friends and never fight each other. Season's greetings from your local bottler of Coca-Cola. Medicated Noxzema Shave Cream. Feel the comfort. Feel the closeness. When your sore throat is slow torture, chloroseptic stops the pain and fast. How fast? So fast, she'll feel relief even before we can finish this commercial. Final just in Minnesota with the last five points of the game, defeating Houston, a mild upset as the Gophers win at home, 65 to 60. Got a tight one in Memphis. Let's get back to Fred and Larry. They're celebrating a bit here in the Mid-South Coliseum. Memphis State down one now to Bradley at 33-32. Bradley, 12 for 20 from the floor right now. Memphis State is at 14 out of 27 shots. Good shooting, Memphis State. Excellent shooting. By Bradley, and you saw those fast break points there. 10-2 ten, ten right now in favor of Bradley. We talked about their ability to get the ball through the net out on a made basket. And on that press of Memphis State, you had them early. They got a lot of runouts. They had one just earlier when Powell got up and jammed it. Got to be very quick on defense to get back against Bradley. Memphis State with 15 big points off the bench. Bradley just four right now. Memphis State with a chance to go in front here. 7.42 left in the first half. Douglas is going to try it. Rodney Douglas has seven points, and Memphis State up one. Thomas down court for Bradley. They couldn't get it there that time. Mercy Hawkins. Daniel. Well, there's a huge sign of an experienced player. You see him not force that shot. He had a chance to take one and didn't take it. Now, this is the jumper. 
Douglas rebounds. Gibson now is going to push it up a little bit. Gibson. Douglas walked to the basketball. The Tigers turn it over again. Really, this might sound silly. Percy Hawkins with a dozen points, but really Memphis State is kind of shutting down pretty good for right now. Well, they have, and I was talking just earlier, just a few seconds ago, about Percy Hawkins on the wing right here. When he had the basketball, he had a chance to take a bad shot, chose not to, and made the pass. I think that speaks well of a good player, and he is that. He's good. Douglas comes the rebound as Manuel missed a three-point try. Gibson on up to Perry. Outside to Gibson. Memphis State very patient on the attack right now. Gibson against Hawkins. Got the pick at the baseline. Jump shot won't fall. Bailey's got it back. Takes it up strong and gets it. No red jerseys there to contest it. And Bailey went up unmolested. He didn't have anybody around him when he went up through there. 36-33. Memphis State with their biggest lead of the night. 6-34 left in the first half. Trempy for a three. That would tie it and does. He picked it in from out front. Well, I don't think he planned that. <laughs> Nobody banks three-pointers from almost straight out. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. And Trevor Trempy has a dozen points. The game is tied. Four out of five from three-point range for Trevor Trempy. Boy, he can shoot it from that range. He's a senior from Havana, Illinois. Small town, South Peoria. Gibson turn around jumper partially blocked. Manuel hauls it down. On up to Hawkins. Runs it along as Perry. And Perry takes it away. He's got Bailey down court. Manuel back in the lane to Powell. Blocked and a foul is going to be called. Take your pick. They're going to give the foul to Cheyenne Gibson. He got hit by about three Memphis State players in the lane. How about that defensive play by Elliott Perry down the floor by Hersey Hawkins. Look at Hawkins. He's heading in. Perry with a great steal. A look up the floor. He's going to see Dwayne Bailey on the other end. Great pass and he got it in there and Bailey jammed it. Perry the freshman with a big defensive play for Memphis State. Taking it away from Hersey Hawkins. What'd you say about Freshman a while ago? Sometimes you shouldn't tell them, Larry. Well, that's right. You know, sometimes they can come out and they can play, and uh, they say, look, nobody expects us to perform or play well or win, and they just come out and play. Perry's one of those players. Donald Powell has had some problems on the line this year. Five for ten at the free throw line. Three points in this one, though, as he hits the free throw, and now two-point lead. A one-point lead right at Memphis State at 38-37. Powell missed 11 games last year with an injured wrist, playing very strongly this year for Bradley. Averaging 10 a game, free throw, good. He has four. And we've got a ball game going right now, a 38-38 tie. Luke Jackson now returns to the lineup for Bradley, and Powell will sit down. Jackson, quite a story, did not play in high school until he moved to Peoria his senior year. So he just hasn't played much basketball. He's a marvelous talent. Gibson in the lane, and a foul's going to go against Hersey Hawkins. And I think it's going to be a two-shot foul. I want to tell you, Gibson got a break that time because he was in the midst of charging right here on a good defensive position by Bradley. Hawkins gave him a little bit of a push. Gibson out of control, right into heavy traffic. He was up in the air and had nowhere to go with the basketball, and he charged, but they gave it to Hawkins because he pushed before he charged. You saw it's Hawkins' second foul. Team fouls even now at six apiece. So from here on out in the first half, both teams in the one and one. 544 left in first half action. Gibson, the sophomore from Memphis, on the line in and out. 94% free throw shooter. Larry Finch, I know, is very happy to have a young man like Shane Gibson, who is a sophomore, and Elliot Perry, who's a freshman, around for three years. <laughs> great guard coming on here at Memphis State. Percy Hawkins, great guard in his own right. Right back for. Bradley, 39-38. Memphis State by one. Manuel. Hawkins. Oh, what a shot from Hersey Hawkins. Can't be that easy, can it? Was that a three? No, they're going to call it two. But he just got it squared up. Got his shoulders pointing right to the basket. Went straight up and shot the jumper. Good strength and release. 40-39 now. Bradley by a point. That not back outside. Perry, that's for three. And it's too strong. And rebounded by Bradley. Jerry Thomas gets it back for the Braves. Manuel Wilson from deep outside can't get it and now Young claims the rebound and Memphis State right back again Perry quick move to the baseline the jump shot falls so oh, that's his first field goal he's one for seven so he hasn't been bashful though he kept shooting the ball 41 40 Memphis State 445 left in the first half Manuel for Bradley Looking for help, and there's a foul in the lane. That's going to go against Cheyenne Gibson. He hooked Wilson coming by, and Gibson commits his second foul. Paul 
Wilson, a 6'6 junior from Lorraine, Ohio, will go to the line. <laughs> you have to tell him to go to the line. He wasn't headed in that direction at all. Oh, they Wilson. thought they were just, uh, it was a common foul and they were not into the bonus yet, but Wilson's gone to the line. Boyd back in the lineup. Cheyenne Gibson now is going to sit down. Paul oh, Wilson, three for seven at the free throw line. At the front end of the 101, that ties the ball game at 41 all. 4.43 left in what has been a very active first half here. Yeah, an interesting visit, Larry, thanks today, talking about all of the calamity that's hit here in Memphis with the loss of the two key players. Tell you what, he's very philosophical about it, and he just hopes that they can get them back. They're going to go through the appeal process. Elliot Perry bobbled the ball, but saved it. Now to Dwight Boyd. Hawkins and Boyd, good matchup at the guard spot. Douglas inside, not lost the handle on it. And it's out of bounds to Bradley with 4.27 left in the first half. Well, that kills you. You make a good pass into the post, and the guy can't hold on to the basketball. Munt let it go right through his hands. Hawkins for three. And it crawled up to the top of the backboard. It went in and won't count. It got up on top of the backboard and out of bounds. Amazing from that range how smoothly he gets that shot off and how under control he is with a finger away from that. Range. But he has some deceptive strength in his shoulders and arms. He's very, very quick with his release, but he has a lot of good strength. His leg, his leg and vertical jumping ability is outstanding. And I like the strength of his shoulders and his arms. Boyd was fouled that time by Anthony Manuel, who came over to help out Hersey Hawkins. And Manuel commits his second personal foul. Watch it again. Good move right here, right through the middle. You see the foul committed. Manual right on the arm. <laughs> see the pick that Munt set on Hersey Hawkins that time. Brett Munt is a big guy, 6'10", and strongly built. Hersey Hawkins stopped like he went into the refrigerator. They got one of those. This one might be bigger than that. No, not quite. <laughs> Boyd's free throw good. Dwight Boyd now with seven points. I would say we're well on our way to a triple-figure game for both clubs. 42-41 Memphis State right now. Still 4.07 to play in first half action here. Sure. Boyd got him both. He's four for four on the line and has eight points tonight. Yeah, he has missed a free throw this year. He's 14 for 14 from the free throw line. Excellent shooter. Manuel works against Perry. Loses it, gets down the lane. Great dish to Jackson, but the ball's on the floor. Jackson fighting to keep it. Can't and Memphis gets it back. Time out here. The fans loving the action in Mid-South Coliseum. 3.55 left in our first half. Memphis State up by two. Atlantis 100, because two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. You give your all to all you do. Don't settle for less from your shampoo. Wash and go, Pert Plus. Ordinary shampoo can't give you this kind of manageability. You need Pert Plus, with a unique combination of effective shampoo for cleaning, plus conditioner for control all in one. For great, easy-to-manage hair, it's one of a kind. Just one shampoo does it all for you. Wash and go. With shampoo, conditioner in one. Pert Plus. Michigan State trailed by six with three minutes to go. Spartans rallied, sent it to overtime in overtime, leading the Hurons at Ypsilanti, 78-77. We've got a tight one in Memphis. Let's get back to it. We'll see you at halftime. Guaranteed. Two-point lead to Memphis State here with 3.55 left and what's been a very good first half of action, Larry. Well, Hersey Hawkins has carried it for Bradley so far. And uh, on the other side, Memphis State's gotten scoring from a lot of different people. In fact, they've had three, four, five, six, seven guys score for them. Chrissy Hawkins has 14 points so far in the first half, and projecting that, he's 13 under his 14 average so far for the year. Averaging nearly 42 points a ball game. Perry, the freshman against Manuel. Well, Manuel doing a good job defensively, keeping up with Perry, who is very quick. Douglas comes out to get it. Now Boyd goes to work against Hersey Hawkins. Baseline jumper won't go. Rodney Douglas gets it back up and in. Fred, when you go help defensively, you give up that weak side rebound, and that's what happened to Bradley. They gave a lot of help that time when Boyd made that baseline move, but 
nobody was on the other side to help rebound, and that's why the easy basket for Memphis State. Memphis State up four. That's their biggest lead of the night. 3.29 left in the first half. And look at Perry go after Emmanuel. Wilson top of the circle. Down inside it goes. Turnaround jumper off the baseline. Good. Luke Jackson, nice move down underneath, right on the baseline. First two points for the 6'8 sophomore from Springfield. I said earlier he moved to Peoria. He moved to Springfield and played in Springfield. The Calvary Academy is the only year he played in high school. Munt against Jackson. Turn, jump hook, won't drop. Jackson claims the rebound. And Jackson helping this Bradley ball club now. Here they get it up court in a hurry. Wilson, Manuel, Hawkins had it, lost it. Douglas picks it off the floor. And Memphis State gets it back with a two-point lead. 2.46 left in the first half. Perry, good. It's a two-point shot for Elliott Perry. He has four. Memphis State by four. Percy Hawkins. Manuel. In the paint, baseline Thomas, and the whistle blows a foul against Dwight Boyd, and he knew it. He's upset with himself. First, second foul on Dwight Boyd. Did you see Manuel take that ball right down the heart of that Memphis State defense and kicked it off to the left side, and Thomas wide open. Good pass. He just missed a shot, and Boyd got him right on the elbow. Lovely. A lot of coaches like, well, maybe a Henry Iba sitting watching this ball game, wondering why they're going to let him bring it in the paint like that. It used to be forbidden territory, but when you get a guy as quick as Manuel, it's pretty hard to stop him and keep him out of there. Well, the other thing, too, I think, Fred, is the defenses have gotten so extended now. They bring themselves out on the floor. You remember clubs didn't use to press full court. They wouldn't pick up half court. Very seldom they go to full court, except when you were uh, at the end of the ball game and you needed the basketball. Now clubs and coaches are taught to go out and press full court, and they, they're much better defensively now than they were 20 years ago. And the press, for the most part, used to mean you were behind. Exactly. Free throw good. You know, a lot of clubs use it as an offensive weapon now. They like to get the ball and turn it into layup. Perry makes a quick move on Manuel, but lost the handle. Young saves it. Back outside it comes to Perry. 2.08 left in the first half here. Memphis State with a two-point lead. Perry to McLaughlin, who's in the ball game now. A freshman from Monticello, Indiana. Shot in and out, and the rebound away to Bradley. Luke Jackson, Anthony Manuel. Up court in a hurry. Wilson quick in the lane, lost the ball on the floor. Picked up by Rodney Douglas. And Perry brings it right back with a minute 45 to go. You know, it might be a good idea right here. Larry Fitch may want to just take his time and really slow it down and use this 45-second clock this trip and the next trip. That way he'll ensure himself at least being tied or pretty close to being tied or ahead going into the halftime. Douglas puts up the shot instead. Tip try won't go. And Young had it, lost it, picked up by McLaughlin. And a foul's going to go against Bradley, and Stan Albeck is beside himself on the far side of the court. I'll tell you what, Stan Albeck just did a bunny hop down the side of the floor <laughs> over there. I thought he was going to go up over the table. Watch it right here. Mung with a missed tip right there. Bradley looks like they've got the basketball. It slips behind, right between the legs of Hawkins. McLaughlin picks it up, starts up. They called the fouls. McLaughlin started up. Jay, one reason he's beside himself is the third foul on Hersey Hawkins, and he's going to take him out of the ball game now. Hawkins draws his third foul with a minute 28 left in the first half, and he's going to sit down. McLaughlin free throw in and out. Freshman couldn't drop it. Now Bradley gets it back. Chance to tie. 123 left in the first half. Manuel drives the baseline. And the foul's called. I believe on Young as Manuel got to the lane. Yeah, so we've talked about the quickness of Hawkins all night long. I want to tell you something. Manuel's as quick as anybody getting into that defense and getting there quickly. He blew right by Young, and Young put his hand in the middle of his back and pushed him through there. Maybe that's why he was getting through so quick. Boy. Russell Young's first foul, Anthony Manuel, at the line for the first time tonight, has hit five out of eight tries this year. Manuel, a 5'11 junior from Crane High School in Chicago. Bradley really recruits that Chicago area well. But Bradley's got a great tradition in basketball. They have been good for so, so many years. Memphis State used to be in the Missouri Valley Conference before they joined the Metro. In fact, a lot of clubs have been in the Missouri Valley Conference over the years. Jim you know, Bradley is the only team in the country to be invited to the first NCAA, the first NIT, and the first Commissioner's Cup tournament. Remember the old Commissioner's Cup? Lasted a couple of years. This game is now tied at 47 with a minute 17 left in the first half. <clears throat> Up comes Memphis State with the basketball. 
Perry down inside. Bailey right back to Perry. Couldn't find the shot. McLean back to Bailey. Bailey turn around jumper. Good. Eli drives it, but he gets it in. Not much trajectory, not much height on it, but he just got it off the back of the rim. Memphis State now with that two-point lead. They may have a chance to go in here with the lead. Queen Bailey has a clear high right now, and we're only in the first half of the game, and Jackson answers with two at the other end. 12 points for Bailey, four for Jackson. And a good assist by Manuel that time, who's averaging 10 a game. Game tied at 49-49, 38 seconds left in the half, 35 on the shot clock. Bailey, jump shot good. He has 14 in the first half tonight. So Dwayne Bailey has answered the challenge here. With the loss of Alexander and Gray, Bailey picking up a career high. And oh, long jump shot by Paul Wilson for three. He has four, and Bradley leads by one. 16 seconds left in the first half. And what a half it's been. Ten seconds left. Got to go up. Three seconds. McLean badly off balance. Great defense played right there by Thomas, and that's the end of the half. And Bradley will go to the locker room with a one-point lead halftime here in Memphis State. 52-51, Bradley. Well, Bradley has the lead. Memphis State, Fred White has the national ranking at number 19, but as they were pointing out during the first half, Memphis outgunned certainly coming into this game, what with the uh, suspensions of the two players who took early money from sports agent Jim Abernathy. We'll be talking more about that with head coach Larry Finch in this halftime. I'm Bob Lee. At halftime, it is game two of our doubleheader this evening. You've already seen Wichita State and Austin P tonight. You're watching Bradley and Memphis State. Let's get you caught up on some scores. Number 14 in the country, North Carolina, has never lost to Citadel. It didn't happen tonight. An easy victory 98 to 74 Syracuse all over St. Bonaventure as the Orange had a big lead at halftime and coasted next up it'll be UT San Antonio then Moorhead State then Siena then it's the Big East for number nine Syracuse Miami of Florida with a comfortable win tonight over St. Thomas 71 to 49 Eric Brown had 26 points in that game for the Hurricanes Tennessee at home in the new arena with a comfortable victory over the Catamounts of West Carolina 87 to 69 our earlier game here on ESPN Wichita State pulling away when it counted down the stretch over Austin P. 72-66. Uh, the Bulls of South Florida, that game now a final of victory over Central Florida, 86-71. Eastern Michigan, this is the game of the night, back and forth throughout the entire night in overtime. The Hurons rally late in the overtime to win at home in Ypsilanti, 84-80 over Michigan State. And by the way, Michigan had won, State had won 22 of the 24 meetings coming into tonight. Minnesota at home, a mild upset, winning at home over the favorite Houston Cougars. That final was 65-60. And we're at halftime right now. Bradley in Memphis, leading the Memphis State Tigers, 52-51. We continue with a look at Hersey Hawkins, the man who leads the nation in scoring after this. What can you give to all your dear friends? Give them the gift that adds a little color to their lives. Every day, USA Today. In four concise, colorful sections, USA Today brings your friends up to date on the latest news from every state across the USA. Quick tips and important info for the money-minded. All the latest sports stats. In life, you'll find the hottest trends. And for us cross-country travelers, it sure helps to know the weather out there. So call now and receive 13 weeks of USA Today for only, ho, 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 $29.25. That's a savings of 10% off the regular price. Plus, if you order a USA Today gift subscription now, you'll get a special holiday ornament and a $5 AT&T long-distance gift certificate free. Call now and give the gift that'll make them shout out with glee. USA Today. You'll go down in history. What's your condition? Still serious. Everything ready in Chicago? The surgical team will be waiting. Good. You will be at the airport in seven minutes. Your flight's on time. This is going to be one complicated operation. That's why they called you. When you're something special, people know it. Light, 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 light up the night.
ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Bradley and Memphis State. Brought to you by Perk Plus, shampoo plus complete conditioner in one, so you just wash and go. And by Timex. Welcome back at halftime. I'm Bob Lee Bradley on the road at Memphis State, leading it over the 9 19 Memphis State Tigers by the count of 52 to 51. Well, we've talked about Hersey Hawkins a couple of years ago as a sophomore, made quite a name for himself, winning more than a few games at the buzzer. He has developed into a complete ball player. And now a look at the nation's leading scorer. Meet Hersey Hawkins. The rest of the Missouri Valley already has. It's hard to think that a 27-point-a-game player can be under-publicized, but Bradley's Braves were on probation. Now his team is street legal. Hawkins is a bona fide star, and he's getting raves. You know, I never played anybody that was as good and that unselfish, you know, as he is, and he still is, you know, the best guy in the world to be around. I like to get the rest of the players involved in the game. I don't want people, you know, who come to see me play, or people in the stands to think that the only thing I do is come to the arena just to shoot the ball. So, you know, I scribe on, you know, defense, passing the ball, and other things in the game that makes a complete player. We've been roommates for four years now, so, you know, I know him really well. And, uh, you know, he, he came into school, he's really shy, you know, he, he didn't want to shoot at first. You know, coach had to make him shoot. He got him in practice, told him if he didn't shoot, he wouldn't play. I guess I can probably agree with Donald somewhat. Coming to a Bradley, I was really shy. You know, uh, I didn't know what to expect out of college life. And, you know, I really wasn't a really talkative person. But each year has been something new to me. I've made a lot of friends here. And you know, I think I've matured a lot. And, and hopefully, you know, I'll remember these days for the rest of my life. Those memories will carry him to the NBA. Hawkins is expected to go early in round one. I think about guarding Jordan and <laughs> guarding Magic Johnson, <laughs> those kind of things I think about. Am I ready for it? He's going to be um, uh, a target for uh, the other people, and if he's a number one pick, uh, there are no guarantees there because a lot of number one picks have been cut. But uh, he's got a great uh, demeanor and a great temperament. Uh, he is never uh, down on himself and has uh, a great deal of confidence, and yet he can fight through a slump. All of those are qualities uh, that are great. And one more thing, the name is Hersey, not Hershey Hawkins. Oh yes, definitely, <laughs> because just about everyone calls me Hershey. Uh, I even find myself calling myself Hershey sometimes when somebody asks me what's my name. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I, I used to let it bother me, but now I don't even worry about it. That may be his biggest concern right now. His senior season has begun with a flourish, and when you look to see how it plays in Peoria, you're looking at one of the best players in the country. Who has at halftime 14 points, averaging nearly 42 a game over the first three games of the season. Bradley has the lead at halftime by that 52-51 count. I'm Bob Lee as we continue to talk to Larry Finch, who's lost two of his ball players, suspended, ineligible for signing early with an agent. That's our score. Memphis State trails by uh, one point at halftime. That's a 52-51 score. It's the first game for the Memphis State Tigers since earlier this week when Sylvester Gray and Marvin Alexander both were declared ineligible. They had signed early with sports agent Jim Abernathy. It is a continuing problem. It's just another problem at Memphis State. Before the game tonight, Larry Conley talked with uh, Larry Finch, who said the coaches are in a tough spot. We as coaches all, all of America do the same thing. Uh, we call our young men in, uh, not only the basketball players, but the entire athletic department. And we, we, we go over these uh, situations, and, and hopefully uh, the most of them will listen to you. But uh, sometimes you have one or two that will deviate, and you have these type problems. I'm just hoping something will be done, uh, maybe not on the, uh, the, the much as the NCAA is concerned, as, as it is through the judi judiciary system. Uh, I think our law enforcement has to impose some type of uh, stipulations uh, on people that are doing this. Uh, you get young men that are 18, 19, or 20 years old and, and, and you put this type of money in front of them, sure, I mean, it's very tempting. Uh, something has to be done along those lines as well as we revamping some of our rules. 
And right now on the court, the cruel hard truth of it for Larry Finch. He's got a lot of holes to fill. And uh, Dwayne Bailey, a senior who's averaging just about two points a game coming into this game, seeing a lot of action. He leads the way right now for Memphis State. He's got 14 points. Back to the Mid-South. We'll check some scores, then head back down to Tennessee after this. I went to my dentist with the worst pain. He told me about a different medicine. It's in these little yellow pills. Nuprin. Works so well on that pain, no wonder it's great on my awful headaches. Nuprin. It's not aspirin, not Tylenol. It's ibuprofen. So effective. Two Nuprin stop headaches better than extra strength Tylenol. And Nuprin's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Nuprin. Little. Yellow. Different. Better. It even worked on my worst pain. What news of the Earthlings? Total high tech, sir. Indeed? How? Check out those Casio watches. That new Casio Pulse watch checks your pulse rate. Not bad for a Zog my age. Casio's new data bank watch remembers up to 50 phone numbers, dates, hey, whatever. Amazing. Yeah, they've got more new watches than you can shake a floor bat. Splendid. I can always use another Casio. <laughs> they do a lot more than just tell time. Conica Tough. Conica's Royal Copiers, the answer for tough customers. A full line of copiers that have proven themselves tough in businesses from coast to coast. Copiers backed by nationwide sales and service that's as tough as it is responsive. And that's not just tough, that's tough to beat. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, Bradley and Memphis State, brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. At halftime, the Bradley Braves leading Memphis State, the number 19 team in the country at the Mid-South Coliseum, 52 to 51. And welcome back once again. I'm Bob Lee. We'll be getting back to Fred White and Larry Conley in just a second. This is the second game of our doubleheader this evening in game one from the Levitt Arena in Wichita tonight. We had a look at the Shockers taking on the Governors of Austin P. This was an exciting one back and forth. The Shockers by three here. Paul Gafrovich, a freshman to Sasha Radunovich. And Wake Wichita State leads it by five. They shot nearly 75% in the first half. Dwight Prelo in the second half lays it home, and the Wheat Shockers up by 10. But Austin P would twice cut down 10 point leads. Vincent Brooks way outside. The lead's down to four. But then the Viches get together. Radunovich to Gavrovich. Back door, and the Shockers up by eight. Lou Hill with a great defensive second half. Stealing it. And I dreamed I saw Lou Hill this night putting it in. The Shockers up 58-53. Just the play of the game with two minutes to go. The back door, Dwight Puelo to a Hill all alone. Shockers win it 72-66. to And Radunovich had 18. Tony Ray had 21 points to lead all comers. Important score we're keeping an eye on tonight down in El Paso. If UTEP wins it, it'll be Don Haskins' 500th career victory as a collegiate coach. Last Saturday night against New Mexico State, the Miners are losers, so the second shot for the Bear to get number 500. Looks like he'll have it, leading by 12 tonight against the Lamar Cardinals. Let's check some other scores. Some finals coming in Central Michigan over Youngstown State as the Chippewas defeat the Penguins by that 30-point margin. Mild upset Northwestern in Chicago, defeating Loyola by the count of 57-47 to in that game. Loyola had got in the slight favorite in that game. Billigans of St. Louis taking on Chicago State tonight. That's a final now. St. Louis, which has defeated this Memphis State team already this, uh, this year with a 53-51 victory over Chicago State. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech, that's now a final with a victory over Jackson State, 89-76. Southern Mississippi, the Golden Eagles running their record under M.K. Turk up to 3-0 on the season. 71-69, the final score tonight in Manhattan, Kansas, as the Golden Eagles uh, coming off a victory over Clemson, continuing on the road winning at Kansas State. 
and the Evansville Purple Aces coached by Jim Cruz, former uh, assistant to Bob Knight in Indiana with the victory over Georgia State, 88-67. to We've got action coming your way tomorrow evening. It's from Washington, from Seattle, Washington, to Paul in Washington gets underway at 11 Eastern Time. And Saturday evening at 8 Eastern Time, Number 8 Temple, which looks increasingly like it has the stuff to really be challenging for a Final Four berth. Another look at the Owls as they'll be taking on South Carolina live 8 Eastern time on Saturday night. We've got a one-point game. Let's get it back now to the Mid-South. We'll see if Hawkins and the Braves can do it against Memphis State. Fred? Well, there's something they've been doing very well, getting the ball in the basket here tonight. Good shooting percentages. Absolutely. Bradley, right now, the Braves at 59%. And Memphis State, a very respectable 50%. 22 out of 44. My goodness, that's 15 more shots. <laughs> it is. From the free throw line, look at that. Bradley, 93%. 13 of 14. Memphis State, 75% on 6 of 8. One reason they have 15 more shots, Larry, is what they've done on the offensive glass. There are the total rebounds, just 19 to 16. Not that big a margin, but how about the offensive rebounds? Well, Memphis State, of the 19 rebounds, has got 11 offensive rebounds, and some of those have turned into baskets. Look at the turnovers right there. Bradley with nine, and Memphis State with five. Really taking care of the ball very well, both sides. Been scoring. Memphis State's had a little more help off the bench than has Bradley. Team fouls. Ursi Hawkins is in some foul trouble with three at halftime. The only one that really is. He'll have to take it easy. Defense at the onset of the second half. How about the shooting from three-point range? Well, obviously, Trippie's the one who's leading in that category for Bradley. They've attempted 12 shots and made five Memphis State, but two with one. Paul Wilson has the other three-point goal for Bradley. Trevor Trumpy came out and hit his first four shots from three-point range. Hersey Hawkins leading the way with 14 points. And Larry, he has five assists in the first half also. Trumpy with a dozen. I tell you, look at Manuel with six. He had eight assists in the first half. That is outstanding. So the Bradley guards giving you 13 assists to go with their 20 points in the first half. Memphis State's going. Wayne Bailey with his, the biggest game of his career already with 14 points. Douglas 9, Boyd 8, Gibson 7, McLean 5, Perry and Young each had 4. Perry, Memphis State set up at the wrong end of the floor and tried to trick Bradley and came down and got the 2. Good move, good move. They got the basket, it doesn't matter. Mercy Hawkins tries to answer Kent. Trevor Trimpey trying to kick it back outside, stolen by Perry. Perry on the run against Manuel. Great feed to Cheyenne Gibson. Nine points Gibson, and Memphis State with four quick points to open the second half, regaining the lead. Manuel off balance, and a foul is called against Wayne Bailey, and that might have been a bad foul there. Manuel's in no shape to score. Well, what happened was I think Bailey got off balance, and uh, it caused him to uh, create that foul right there because when Manuel came straight at him, he really had nowhere to go. He was going to block it, but I think he got off balance and just kind of bumped him as he started up. Bailey's injured a bit. He's, I think, got kicked in the knee. In the action under the basket that time, he's staying the ball game. Anthony Manuel to the line. 5'11", junior, junior from Crane High School in Chicago, has a half dozen points in this one. He had 17 assists in this game against Memphis State last year. Memphis State won the ball game, but that's the most assist ever in a game against a Memphis State ball club. Manuel, 3 for 3 at the line here. He gets his ball club back within a point with his free throw. And does. He is a good-looking point guard, man. Yeah, he really is, and he's got great strength at 185 pounds on that 5'11 frame. It really gives him a stronger, much more larger presence out front than a lot of point guards. Gibson, Rodney Douglas, now back to Elliott Perry. Hey, you talk about running the club, how about Perry? Outstanding freshman point guard. Bailey had the offensive rebound. It was slapped out of his hands, and now a foul is going to be called against Steve Ballard. That is his third personal foul. Ballard has yet to score in this game. The third foul comes with 1905 left in the game. Watch this foul by Ballard on the miss by Gibson. He throws it up and hits the back of the rim. Caroms long. Watch the slap out of his hands right there. Good play. Ballard fouls right there going for the ball. Greg Jones gets it right back to Manuel. Takes Perry in the lane. Dishes back to Jones. Shots up on the rim and it drops. Might have been a hand on it. I think Greg Jones got that basket. Looked like he might have tipped it in. Give Jones the two points for now. And the rebound. Gibson takes it off the offensive glass. Throws it up with English on it. It won't drop, but he's fouled. 
of the game being played to paint right now at both ends. I will tell you one thing about the Memphis State Guards. Both Perry and Gibson are not very shy about not wanting to put it up. They will stick it up there if it comes in. Watch Gibson right here. Get his rebound. Go up. There's the foul. You know, Gibson sat out last year, Fred, as I said earlier, with a prop 48. And he's come back. And I tell you what, I think he's going to be a fine guard for this Memphis State team. He's an excellent player, as is Perry. Gibson gets the free throw down. Cheyenne Gibson has 10. In fact, this Memphis State ball club is going to be very deep at the guards now with Boyd coming back from the injury. And Gibson and Perry have been getting a lot of experience. Cheyenne Gibson is 3 for 4 at the line with 11 points in this contest. Memphis State leads by 1. 18-35, left in the basketball game. Manuel had the dish, and Jones dropped it. Now Jackson sticks it in. Luke Jackson with the offensive rebound. He has a half dozen points, and Bradley with the lead. Gibson to Perry. In and out. Trevor Trippi claims the rebound. And Trippi kicks off to Manuel, and up it comes. Jackson shot, won't fall. Good for Jackson. Trempe shot good. Trevor Trempe has 14 points now. 17-59 left in the ball game. 60-57, Bradley by three. Memphis State start, is starting their offense down low now. They're setting a stack down there. Gibson and Perry really have been throwing it up a lot from the outside, and Memphis State now trying to force the ball more to the inside to try to get it to Douglas. Ball was kicked by Trempe as it came in the lane. Memphis State will keep possession. Douglas in quickly, Perry, Gibson, Douglas, Glenn Bailey's not on the floor right now for Memphis State, and got Ballard at the post. You know, the one dimension that Memphis State had when they had Alexander in there up low and also Gray is that they spread out so wide underneath, it's very easy to get the ball in there to them. The players are in there right now for Memphis State, Douglas and Ballard are not very wide guys, and they don't take up a lot of room. Well, Bailey is on the floor now, and the ball is off his hands, out of bounds. It'll be Bradley basketball. 17-18 left in the ball game. 60-57. Bradley by three. Larry Finch is seen making the substitution. Dwight Boyd's going to come back in the game for the Tigers. It's been quite a basketball game. Bradley up by nine early. Memphis State's led by as many as four. Manuel against Gibson. Now Hawkins, what a smooth shooter he is. Hersey Hawkins has 16 points now. But the way they set that up, they just set him down low down there. And Trippy or uh, I'm not sure if it was Jackson that time it's green for him. He just pops out and very quickly assumes that shooting position. And as soon as it hits his hands, it's launched. Doesn't take him long, does it? Five-point lead, Bradley now. The Braves have reestablished a little margin. There's a steal. Hersey Hawkins on the run out against Ballard gets it. And Hawkins now with 18 points on the night, and Bradley suddenly holding to a seven-point lead with 16.44 to play. Right now, Bradley doing a nice job of defending on the other side. They're keeping the ball away from that out outside. Douglas missed the little jumper. Bailey bowls his way back inside and scores. Dwayne Bailey with 18, and he was fouled. Looked like Luke Jackson got him as he started up, and it got him on the elbow. Watch it again. Trippy right here trying to guard Douglas. He throws up a shot that goes off the backside. Good rebound by Bailey. A little bit of a pump fake right there. Jackson gets him on the arm. Think about responding. Dwayne Bailey with a career high already in this ball game. Larry, when Memphis State needed somebody to step into the breach up front, he's done it very well tonight. Three-point play. Dwayne Bailey. He now has 19. 64-60, Bradley down. 16-25 up in this ball game. Long way to go. Where these two clubs score, I can guarantee you that's a long way to go. <laughs> that basket will not count. Hawkins hit the jumper from the far side, and boy, the Bradley coaching staff upset. They wanted the bucket. The foul was called. They are not going to allow the basket. You think Stan Albeck and Mo McCone are back in their NBA days? They want that continuation. You saw Marty Gillespie over there wanting the call also. The entire Bradley coaching staff was up. That ball, by the way, was against Rodney Douglas' his first. Rare miss by Hawkins right there. Gibson. Boyd, quick move, takes Hawkins to the lane, and the jump shot good. 
what a matchup at the guards. Right back, Bradley. Hawkins against Boyd. Quick double turn at the baseline. He's going to give it up outside to Manuel. And Boyd gets a hand for the defense and shutting down Hawkins that time. Hawkins really working running the baseline. Well, Boyd doing a nice job defensively on Hawkins. Luke Jackson gives it back to Manuel. Memphis State putting some defensive pressure on now. 64-62 Bradley. Manuel solved the pressure right there. Anthony Manuel has 10 points in the contest. Four point, five point lead to Bradley make it. 15-29 left in the game. There's a state again looking to the inside. There's Boyd with a good move, good pass. Oh, down inside to Bailey. 21 points for Dwayne Bailey. He keeps adding to his career high. Three point lead to Bradley. Hey, they're really running their stuff pretty well. We'll talk about it when we come back. We have a break here in the action in the Mid-South Coliseum. It comes with 15-12 left in this basketball game. Bradley leading Memphis State by three. And you'll hear how to get a lot more Chevy for a lot less. $350 to $1,200 less on a specially equipped new Beretta, Cavalier, or Celebrity, depending on the car you select. You could even save $1,200 on this new Corsica, with options like air conditioning, tilt wheel, and more. Couldn't you go for savings like these right now? The heartbeat of America, that's the day Chevrolet. The Skill Twist Cordless Power Screwdriver. It's a new twist on an old idea. The Timex Atlantis 100 because two-thirds of the Earth is covered with water. All the names, all the games, all the time. Only on ESPN. In El Paso, Don Haskins trying to become the 20th Division I coach to register 500 career victories. Now in the second half, inside 13 minutes, he has a lead on Lamar. Let's get back to Memphis. Some sentiments being expressed by the fans here at Memphis State, hanging an agent from energy. I've never seen an agent who looked like that, though. 15-12 left in this ball game. There's your score. Bradley up by three. Quick baseball game, and yet both teams taking good care of the basketball there. Go, go. Both running their stuff pretty well, aren't they? Yeah, they really are, and the defense has been very good here in the second half. You know, both clubs ran up and down the floor a lot, both of them in the 50s. Showed any uh, results of that. Both of them in pretty good physical condition. Anthony Manuel, jump shot, in and out, won't fall, rebound. Jackson had it, can't hold on. Manuel trying to dig it out. Or Jones, rather, it was, and now here comes Memphis State. Douglas is reflected in there. Picked off by Greg Jones, to Manuel. Percy Hawkins. Rodney Douglas defending him now. Boyd was on him for a while. That could be a full-time job. You want to pull a guy off, you don't want to leave him on Hawkins all night because you can just chase and shatter. Deflection by Bailey results in the steal, and here's Gibson all alone. It was Dwayne Bailey that made the play. What a night he's having. He's had eight shots in a row at the offensive end, just made the defensive play. That shot won't fall, and Ballard pulls the rebound away. Dwayne Bailey having a career game here, and Gibson lost the handle on it. Bailey saves it. He hits the deck, and a foul's going to be called against Bradley. Dwayne Bailey's having a career night, Larry. Bailey looked like he was in slow motion when he went down that time. <laughs> Watch it again. Here comes Gibson. Watch him. The ball comes right down. Good slap right there. Manuel was the one who slapped it. Bailey right behind to pick it up. There's the trip. Bailey just kind of gradually works his way down to the floor. Greg Jones committed his third personal foul. Wayne Bailey has hit 10 out of 12 shots from the floor in this ball game, eight in a row, has a career high 21 points, and just made the deflection and it resulted in the steal at the other end of the floor. So he's really having a night. Ballard sits down. Douglas with the inbounds pass. Memphis State down by a point. 14 minutes left in this game. 
Boyd makes the move on Hawkins, who has three fouls. Has to be a little careful when Dwight Boyd sticks it. He has a dozen points. At some point in this ball game, you have to think Ursie Hawkins is really going to take things over for the Bradley offense. He has the ball right there. He's really been selective, though. Inside, bad pass. Jerry Thomas couldn't find the handle. And Memphis State, up by a point, gets the ball back with 13.40 left in this game. And a good one it is. Cheyenne Gibson. Now we have Barry out of the ball game for a moment now. And Gibson operating at the point. There's Boyd outside. Hawkins with him. Boyd makes the move. Puts up the... Going to take a jump shot. Got it to Bailey and threw his hands out of bounds. So had two things right there. I think Boyd really taking advantage of this situation knowing that Hawkins has three fouls on him. And he knows that. Penetrated in there and should have taken the shot. Instead, dished off and threw a bullet pass right into Bailey. When you're that close, you don't want to throw the ball that hard. You just want to kind of lob it in there. 68-67. Memphis State by one, and the foul is going to go against Young. As Hawkins took the baseline that time, Russell Young committed his second foul. The thing you like about Hersey Hawkins is he's very smooth. Right now, he's not forcing the situation. He knows he's way under his average, and he's got a basketball game to win. Right now, his club is up by one. He's just trying to find a way to score, pass, and play defense. Trevor Treppy for three, in and out. Jackson was up high to stick it back, picks it up, and scores. Great effort from Luke Jackson off the offensive board for Bradley. He has eight points. Now the Braves up by one. Gibson with a miss outside. Ball battled around and picking it up for Bradley, Jerry Thomas. Now to Anthony Manuel. Now Hawkins in the lane, goes to work. Oh, great pitch down the lane and Jackson slams it home. Fred, you talk about a complete player. Don't talk to me about this man and the way he can score. He does a lot of things for this basketball team. What an excellent player he is. Five first half assists. Bradley showing a little zone as Memphis State brought it up that time. And now we have a timeout taken here with 12.30 left in this basketball game at the Coliseum. Bradley's opened a three-point lead over Memphis State. Hi. Hi. I'm looking for presents for my husband and son. And I've seen shirts, ties, books, records. But you know, they love sports. There is a perfect present for guys like that. It's Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. America's number one sports magazine. It gives them 55 weeks of great sports coverage, including special issues and the annual swimsuit issue. This year, they'll also get the 88 Olympic Preview Edition. And you'll get SI at the Christmas sale price. Over 60% off the cover price. A sale before Christmas? And no crowded stores. No crowds? Just call their toll-free Christmas hotline for 55 issues of Sports Illustrated at the Christmas sale price. Three monthly payments of $15.99 each. You won't even be billed till next year. You even get a card for under the tree. Just call toll-free 1-800-274-5300. I'm sold. <laughs> Where's the phone? Uh, over there. What's that number? 1-800-274-5300. I know what I'm getting my boyfriend. And my dad. Number four, North Carolina, no troubles tonight, 98-74 uh, over the Citadel. J.R. Reed had 21 points. He shot 10 at 15. Carolina is now 6-1. Back to Memphis. Good crowd, Mid-South Coliseum. This thing has been sold out for every ball game since back in 71 and 72 when Larry Finch was a freshman here. And speaking of that, Larry, Larry Finch's record as a player and coach at Memphis State is now 252-88. You know what people might forget about him? Everybody remembers the national championship game, UCLA, when Walton hit 21 out of 22 shots. Larry Finch had 29 points in that ball game. It's just that Walton was so dominant with 44, not many people remember, but Larry Finch had a great night in that game. I mean, a great statistic I like on uh, Larry Finch is the fact that he has spent almost one-third of his life at the State. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not very old. <laughs> Percentage can only rise from here if he does a good job, and he's doing that. Perry to Boyd. Long here from Bradley. Gibson in the lane was fouled by Trevor Trempe. It's going to be the first foul on Trevor Trempe. Trempe, an unusual big guy at 6'7". Great three-point shooter. Watch the foul by Trempe right here. Good pass to the opposite side right there. Gibson goes up, draws the foul. You know, Gibson has a great ability to do that. He's got a body that would... Once he goes inside there, the big guys think they can block, but he has a way of protecting the basketball and getting it up and getting it down. Gibson's free throw. Good. I'll give you an odd stat on Trevor Trempe. 6'7". He shot seven free throws so far this year. 
That's one more than he shot in 28 games last year. You think a guy like that around the basket would get fouled quite a bit? You know, he takes a lot of three-point shots, too, as we talked about earlier. 71-69. There he is. He is. Percy Hawkins. I wonder if during that timeout, Stan Albeck might have something said something to Percy Hawkins about looking for your shot a little bit more. Gibson out there on that wing. Falls him through. Hawkins turn around, jump shot, good. Might be right, Larry. Well, he looked for it that time. He didn't look to pass. He just caught the ball and went straight up with it. White Boyd answers at the other end. 15 points now for Boyd. One point lead Bradley. 11.33 to play. Off the baseline. Shot good by Jerry Thomas. And he has a half dozen points. The defensive assignment switched on Hawkins that time. Bradley in a 2-3 zone now. Well, unusual, you don't see Bradley in zone that often. Gibson, Perry, Perry, top of the circle, jump shot, off the heel of the rim. Rebound, battle for it, Perry had it, couldn't hold on, and here comes Hawkins. Out on the break, they're three on two. Hawkins for Manuel down to the baseline, and the jump shot off the rim. Boyd has the rebound. Thomas couldn't hit the jumper off the break. Memphis State down three. Perry with a great piece of Shai and Gibson. Woo, it looked like he was on ice that time. He just kind of slid by. 16 points for Shai and Gibson. Manuel comes right back. Gets it to Jackson. Knocked loose by Ballard. Perry coming out on the break. He has Gibson on one wing. Young on the other. And they try to get it to Young. He sees it back to Perry. Action is wild here right now. I tell you, the, photo, the photographers in here are having a field day. Everybody's off balance. Boyd, one fake and an off balance jumper. Good. Dwight Boyd stuck it. He has 17. And Memphis State back in the lead by a point with 10 fall to play. 76-75 Tigers. Good ball game, Fred. Both clubs play well. Manuel against Perry. Hawkins picks it up on the wing. Boyd defending. Jackson's going to go at Ballard. And he's fouled. Boyd came over to help out. Boyd asking for a breather right now. He hasn't been playing very much, and he wants to come out of the ball game for a moment. Yeah, let's watch it again right here. Dwight Boyd right there. Hawkins with a good dish to the inside. Jackson, Drew Ballard, got the foul. Yeah, Dwight Boyd really hasn't had a lot of time to get back into real good shape. He's been out with that broken wrist, and he's set out for a couple of weeks. You know, there's a difference between just running and playing the game of basketball. You can run straight out, but if you're going to get in shape to play basketball, you've got to have that stop and starting motion because that's what really gets you in condition. So there's Boyd on the bench getting a little break. Some of the players were kidding him. He's got a couple of screws in that wrist on there, and they tell him uh, once in a while a screw comes through. <laughs> Luke Jackson on the free throw line. Hey, there's a little news right there. Luke Jackson hit the free throw. He was one for 15 at the free throw line this year, and he got that one down. 11 points for Luke Jackson. He's having a good night, and he came back and hit the second one. One for 15 at the line going into that. I've never seen anybody one for 15 at the free throw line, but he stepped up there and hit two right then. The two big ones gave him the lead again. Baseline jump shot. Good. Oh, excellent shot from Russell Young, and he has a half dozen points. And Memphis State back up by one with 9.39 to play. Well, these young guys are getting it done for Memphis State right now. Trempy with a great feed to Jackson, and he walked with the basketball. Gonna go the other way. Memphis State gets it back up by a point with 9.34 to play. And I think these players are really caught up in it now, Larry. The crowd's gotten into it. You know, they were kind of quiet in the first half. Not typical of a Memphis State crowd, but they're getting into it now. Bradley again back into that 2-3 zone defense. I'm surprised with that zone. Bradley just doesn't play it very much. There's Douglas in and out. Ballard with a tough tip twice, and he couldn't get it. Look at Jackson battle underneath, and he takes it away for Bradley. Excellent work, Luke Jackson. Manuel, pass deflected off the glass. Douglas has got Perry up there. Deflected by Hawkins. It'll be Bradley basketball. It looked like Hawkins got a hand on it and deflected it, but the official is right in line with the play and says no. Uh, Douglas had him wide open. Elliot Perry breaking for the other end down there was wide open, and he just overthrew it. Dwight Boyd right back in the ball game now for Memphis State. Russell Young, the freshman, sits down. Percy Hawkins will play it in. Memphis State's going to apply full court pressure. Memphis State up one, 9.05 to play. Anthony Manuel facing pressure in the backcourt. Gets it up to Trippy. Right 
right back out to the point guard. Thomas turned around shot off the heel of the rim. Douglas to Boyd. Perry with a long jump shot. Oh, he's had a tough shooting night, but he's hanging in there. He has a half dozen points now. And Trippy was right in his face that time as he went up with it. Trippy for a three. Good. Trevor Trippy hit a cold spell, and now he has 17 points in the ball game. That is his fifth three-point goal. Yep. <laughs> oh, what fun, Larry. Take him up and down the court. 82-80 Memphis State, 8.09 left in the game. Elliott Perry's three for 13 for the floor right now, but the freshman hanging in there, he'll keep taking shots. Percy Hawkins goes to work, shots up. It's good, will it count? A foul was called on Boyd. Are they gonna count the bucket? They do. The third foul on Dwight Boyd and the basket, good. Boyd pitch up, save with that call right there. Good move by Hawkins, watch him. He got Boyd, leaned a little bit to the inside, got that half step. Boyd comes over, you can see the foul right there. I think it's a good call. It looked like he got him on the way up. Uh, what a move by Hersey Hawkins. What a magnificent player he is. Russell Young back in the lineup now. And Rodney Douglas sits down for Memphis State. 82-82, Hersey Hawkins with 22 points on the night. He is six for six on the line, has hit 25 straight free throws and 46 out of 48 this year. You know, the one thing Stan Alpex got to be pleased with, Fred, is that he's getting a lot of offensive production from some other players tonight. We see Hawkins finding some offensive help out there. 7.58 left in this game. We have timeout at the Mid-South Coliseum. Bradley leading Memphis State by one. Ours, as you know, is not a perfect world. May I? That's why it's so refreshing when something really perfect comes along. Like Diet Coke. Tastes great straight. Or on the rocks. Yet it's just one calorie. That's why Diet Coke is the perfect soft drink. Whoa! For an imperfect world. Just for the taste of it. Diet Coke. Why do so many people choose GMAC financing to get the GM car or truck of their dreams? GMAC makes it easy. You do it all right at your GM dealers. And we make it easy on your budget with rates and terms to fit your needs. Don't just dream about a new GM car or truck. See your GM dealer about GMAC financing. GMAC. Official sponsor of America's Dreams. In El Paso, 17 straight points for the UTEP Miners. They now lead Lamar 70-47. Don Haskins going for career victory number 500. Racehorse came. Let's get back to Memphis. Fred White. The Tiger at Memphis State and the Tiger cheerleaders having some fun here. 83-82. Badly up by one with 7.58 to play. Memphis State shooting 57% in the second half. Bradley 43%. Everybody in pretty good shape, really. Hersey Hawkins has survived throughout the second half of those three fouls, has not added the fourth. Memphis State now with a chance to regain the lead, which has been seesawing back and forth. They'll let Perry, the freshman, back in. Now they're going to the three guards. They've got Boyd in with them. And what's going to happen tomorrow? People are going to pick up the newspaper and look at the score of this game and say, boy, there was no defense in that game. No. Don't believe it. No. These clubs are both playing good defense. Bradley back in the man now. Hawkins defending Gibson. They look down inside at Ballard. Can't get him. Young, a freshman outside. They've got three first-year players on the floor right now. Four. Kenny Ballard is a transfer. Down inside, they've got Ballard. Chuck Hook. Good. Steve Ballard with his first two points of the night, Larry. Good-looking young player. He's come in here and provided a lot of leadership tonight. 84-83, Memphis State. And a turnover. It's going to be Memphis State basketball now. No, they're going to reverse the call. They're going to give the ball back to Bradley. Boy, the Bradley players look like somebody lost them. They all jumped from the original call. There's the, there's the swat right there. Perry got it on the end. Hawkins on the baseline. Can't get it. And a great block by Ballard. He stuffed Jerry Thomas' shot. 
And now a foul's going to be called on Young on the far side. The third foul on the freshman, Russell Young. Seven minutes and a second left, and don't go away. What would you say at the beginning? Don't blink, you'll miss something. You're right. There's a flurry of action right there. Larry Finch wanted to know what was happening down in the corner in front of that Bradley bench. Everything. Stan Albeck will give him a report after the game. <laughs> Percy Hawkins on the line. Seven out of seven this game. Larry, this is their fourth game of the year, and he has shot 53 throws already. He's averaging 12 and a half free throws a game. That's going to go up when he shoots this one. Well, that tells you just one thing. He's driving to the basket a lot, not just standing outside and making 15 to 18 foot jump shots. Got a lot of rim that time. Got it down. Bradley's back up by one. 17 lead changes now in this ball game. What a drive by Boyd. It wouldn't fall. Offensive work being done by Young. What a play. Is it going to be called for the walk? He is. He really made an effort, did Russell Young, but he hit the deck and was called for the walk. Well, that was a good effort down underneath. Both of these clubs are still getting after it, and we've got 6.48 left to play. 85-84, Bradley. Plays with a basketball. Hawkins way outside. Boyd with him. Got a little screen that time. Thomas at the baseline. Walk. Back it goes to Memphis State. The Tigers with a... with it. He comes down with it. It's a trap. Start over. Boy, and now a foul's going to be called. Perry hit the deck coming through the lane and a push is going to be called. I think Luke Jackson was the guy that got him. He was. And that's his second foul. I think that three now on Jackson. Team foul number five on Bradley. Memphis State's already committed seven in this half. Apologize to our viewers on ESPN for our temporary signal loss. Boyd shot good. Fred, I'd say Dwight Boyd is back. Whew. 19 points tonight for Dwight Boyd coming back from the broken hand. 86-85 Memphis State, 6.05 left in the game. Manuel working against Perry in the jump shot. Good by Anthony Manuel. Well, he just put on a clinic right there. Manuel did against Gibson. Backed him right into the middle of that free throw lane and just put up an easy jump. A good move by Anthony Manuel. He has a dozen points, and Boyd's going to go to work here against Thomas. Double team at the baseline. Throws up the shot and misses, and Bradley digs it out of there. Hawkins to Manuel. Back to Hawkins in the lane. The shot doesn't fall. He's got it again, and it's up, in and out. He's got it again, up and good. What an effort, and he's going to get a three-point chance. Hawkins hanging with it. Got three shots up there. Fred, watch this flurry right here. Manuel, good pass to Hawkins down the middle. He lays it up, he misses. Gets his own rebound. A little bit of a fake, takes it up, misses again. Paul rolls out, he's there. Grabs it, goes up. There's Ballard with a foul. Do you know why Memphis State didn't come and rebound? Because they thought every shot was going to go in. Now Perry's going to sit down for Memphis State. Hersey Hawkins, what a job on the board. He has 27 points in this ball game right now. Five and off five, huh? Nine for nine at the free throw line tonight, and a string now of 28 straight. Okay, he's got six rebounds and six assists to go to those points. Oh, what a complete game he's having. Hawkins looking for his 28th point of the night, gets it. And with the 28 points, Bradley has a four-point lead at 90-86, 5.32 to play, and now Memphis State in need of two with the basketball. Cheyenne Gibson blows by Manuel, gets triple teamed and foul. Trevor Trippy, Jackson, and Manuel were all down at the baseline, three team, triple teaming him. And Jackson plays a good move right there by Manuel to get by him. I thought Manuel could have been called for a foul right there for grabbing him, and Jackson with a little bit of push out of bounds. That's the fourth foul on Luke Jackson. And a substitution coming up for Bradley now. Donald Powell, the 6'8 senior, checking back into the Brave lineup. Luke Jackson's going to sit down with 5.27 to play. He's having a good night offensively, too, Larry. That was a 16 foul on Bradley, yes. Uh, the, next the next one uh, for Memphis State will be a shooting foul. Both of them will be one and one from here on out. Having a little trouble there's we're looking at something on the floor in the lane. I think some ice came from the crowd down there when the uh, foul was committed down on the other end. Tell you who sees it, Dorsey Sims, one of the assistant coaches from Memphis State, came out on the floor to point out to the officials. 
where it was. There's Dorsey Sims. Outstanding high school coach for a long time here in Memphis. Now on the staff of the Tigers, Bailey picks up the inbound pass. He hasn't scored for a while there. Only time to look back inside of him. With Jackson out of there. Boy, they are battling in the paint. Okay, Powell's doing a good job on him on the inside, keeping the ball away. Got a kick right there by Trempy. Bailey and Powell that time were really battling down in the lane. Memphis State down 4, 5, 14 to play now. And they have a new 45-second shot clock after the kick. Gibson against Manuel. Boy, the young guards from Memphis State have acquitted themselves well, Larry. They've done very well. But that was, again, looking to the inside. They want to go to Bailey or Ballard. Both of them trying to establish that post position down underneath. Boy wants to take the ball. He's looking at the shot clock now. I think they're going to run a little bit of that time. 26 seconds on the clock. Bailey fouled as he took the turnaround jump shot. Powell got it. First foul on Donald Powell. Bailey will go to the line. They're going to change it to Trempy, Fred. They gave it to Trempy on the backside. Okay. Make a second foul on Trevor Trempy. And none on Powell. Bradley's going to take the timeout here. So Bradley calling timeout with four minutes, 53 seconds left in the ball game. The Braves leading Memphis State 90-86. One of all your holiday activities with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets. In festive 9 and 20 piece packs. Tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tangy cranberry with a twist of orange. And sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in. Before holiday McNuggets are gone. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half tons with their best automatics and half ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon force handling, full size Chevy V4, level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 V4. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now, get $500 cash back on new full size CK pickups. It's the day Chevy truck. UCLA coming into action tonight, only two and four on the air, still in the first half. You can imagine a couple of three-pointers in this game. They lead the Anteaters of Cal Irvine, 61-43. Let's go back to another NBA-style game in Memphis. Fred White? Bradley has the four-point lead with that 4.53 left on the clock. And these two ball clubs have been after one another all night long. Bradley led by nine early. Memphis State got up by four. Memphis State's out and ready to play. Bradley hasn't walked away from Coach Dan Albeck, who called that time out and took a long time in there. And now one of the officials is going to go over and say something to the Bradley staff, but they've already got him away. But of course, he can't talk to them. No. He was just telling the captain, the captain was telling them, we've got to get out of the huddle. New rule this year that the officials do not talk to the coaches except for a correctable error during the course of the game. Wayne Bailey on the line, career high 21 points tonight. It is only free throw attempt. That's off the heel of the rim. Wayne Bailey has only attempted three, four free throws this year now. This young man played a good ball game tonight. Yes, he has. Three-point lead, Bradley, with 4.53 to play. They lost they it out of bounds. bounds. Came in bounds and bounced off. Anthony Manuel of Memphis State within three points now and the basketball with 4.53 to play. Yeah, it kind of looked like Powell just bounced it off the knee of Manuel. He couldn't come up with it. They rolled out, and Memphis State now has a chance to get one point, maybe even a tie if they can count a three-point shot. Good steal by Hawkins. Steal by Hawkins. He's got Manuel. They're two on one, and Gibson got a hand on it, deflected it out of bounds, and broke up the break. Broke up the break? <laughs> I guess he did, didn't he? <laughs> he broke up the break. Well, he didn't break up the broke. I was right the first time. <laughs> Anthony Manuel. <laughs> Stan Albeck's going to break somebody's neck in a few minutes <laughs> if they don't start taking care of that basketball. <laughs> going to break up the beak. <laughs> it's 90-87. Bradley. Bradley's gone out of that zone defense. They're back into their man-to-man. -man. Emmanuel now against Gibson out front. And again, Memphis State looks to the inside. Can Lloyd take Hawkins again? Yeah. Well, after him, baseline. Oh, oh yeah. How about that for a rejection? Powell came over to help Hawkins out that time. I blocked it. 
They're maybe two of the best guards in the country. Hersey Hawkins and Dwight Boyd. Hawkins right there. Boyd with a good move to get around him. And Hawkins with a great recovery to slap it away. Great defensive play. That's two good plays by Hawkins. He got the steal. Last trip down the floor. And that time he rejected the shot. This is Gibson working as Manuel. Now Douglas against Trempe. Boyd against Hersey Hawkins. Going to try him again. Moves in on him. Lost the handle. Grabs it back. Needs to move the ball now. And finds Douglas. Well, Hawkins doing a nice job on Boyd. They're doing a good job of helping him, too, aren't they? Now Boyd again. We're down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. they got to get it up. Gibson starts to move against Manuel and foul called against Anthony Manuel. We have, that's a big play right there. Let's watch it again. Gibson knows he's got eight seconds on the shot clock. He looked up, made the move baseline. There's Manuel. No question about that call. He was moving both feet, moving along the side. 3.40 left in this game. Bradley by three. Cheyenne Gibson, a sophomore on the line. Has 18 points tonight. That's his high for the year and career. First year player. Proposition 48 player last year. I guess I'd say Proposition 48 non-player last year because you can't play your freshman year. Could be a one-point ball game if he gets this free throw. It's a lot of fun watching these two teams play. Can we have them go all night? Douglas with a rebound. Oh, well, Bailey tried to slam the tip back in. Gibson gets it back. Tough work by Memphis State on the board. Chance to tie here, 329 left in the game. Bailey really wanted to slam that rebound back up in there and couldn't do it. Howard wants it, takes it, blocked, goal and the goaltend call against Powell. Give Ballard his fourth point of the ball game. Powell called for the goaltend, and this game is tied at 90-90. But I'm not sure that ball was going to go in. It might have been a little bit short. No question about the call. 3-10 left in the game, 90-90. Listen to this crowd yell, defense, defense. Percy Hawkins against Boyd, and a foul is going to be called on the white boy. His fourth. Yeah, we came into this game tonight expecting to see a high-scoring affair as you watch Hawkins and Boyd again squaring off on the other end. We've gotten what we wanted. We've got a high-powered, high, high offensive game, which is what we expected to see. Both of these teams shooting very well. Dwight Boyd coming off of uh, a hand injury, having 19 points, having an outstanding night, and we're getting the same kind of thing from Hersey Hawkins on the other end. 29 points now for Hersey Hawkins. He's 11 for 11 on the free throw line tonight. Has now hit 30 straight free throws. Make it 31. 30 points for Hersey Hawkins. He's had at least 30 every game this year. Two-point lead Bradley, 2.59 to play. Memphis State hunting a tie. Douglas. Against Trempe. Gibson outside. Manuel with him. Bailey, turnaround jumper off the rim. Ballard fighting for the rebound, can't get it, and Hersey Hawkins picks it up for Bradley. To Trempe, to Manuel. Had the Braves on the attack with a two-point lead, 2.37 to play. Then what could be a big trip for them? Manuel in the circle. Gibson with him. Manuel's got that basketball on the yo-yo. He really handles it well, up and down, up and down, waiting for somebody to get open, and he's got Hawkins. Boyd picks him up on the switch from Douglas, back to Manuel. Manuel from long range, off the rim, rebound Ballard. Memphis State now with a chance to get it tied. 2-12 left in the ball game. Long pass, Boyd takes the baseline, shot, long fall, and a charging foul against White Boyd, and he's out of the game. Good defensive position that time by Trempe. Watch it again. This is what's going to send Boyd to the bench. Trempe in good defensive position. Look at that. Got established, got his hands up, and Boyd went right through him. There's Boyd coming back from the broken hand. He has fouled out with 19 points. Timeout, 2.09 to play. Two point lead to play. It's fundamentals, fellas. Straight, simple fundamentals. It's a lesson we learn week after week. Track meet of the night in Baton Rouge. Southern U over Tuskegee, 142 to 101. Avery Johnson leading the way for Southern U. He leads the nation in assists. Back to Memphis. Percy Hawkins getting his legs worked on. Looks like maybe late cramps over there, Larry. Yeah, they get a little bit of ice. Somebody's rubbing him down on the backside right there. 
Fred, I don't know that I've seen a guard play in the last couple of years that plays a more complete game than Hersey Hawkins. I've seen some who may be better shooters or some who are better defenders or some who are great passers. But for a complete basketball player, Hersey Hawkins does about as good a job as anybody I've seen play the game. He's had a big night everywhere. Assists, rebounds, points. Has 30 points. Had five assists in the first half alone. Bradley with the basketball. Two minutes left in this game, 92-90. Bradley, Hawkins with the basketball. Action in the lane, shot won't fall. Has his own rebound and he's fouled. A minute 53 left in this contest. Fowler drew the foul right there. Outstanding move in there by Hawkins who now has six assists, eight rebounds, and 30 points. Tell, me, there, points tell me there's another guard around the country that can have a better <laughs> night than that. And I know there are a lot of them out there, but I'm going to tell you what, he has had a real, he's just an outstanding player. Yeah, I'm going to say something else. Every time you see a guy averaging 42 points a game, which Hawkins was coming in, you really suspect the guy, right? Don't suspect this one. He's an unselfish player. Getting an NBA first round pick. I don't think there's any question in anyone's mind that he's going to be in the first round. That broke a string of 31 consecutive free throws he had made. Now, does that mean we quit saying nice things about him? <laughs> Two point lead, Bradley. Minute 53 to play, and that makes it a three point margin to the Braves. And now a substitution. Hawkins is going to come out of there. We're going to try to rest those legs a little bit. Yeah, I wonder if that leg might be bothering him. Yeah, it we'll, must be. We'll take a look at the bench and see. They've got an ice pack over there. Looks like they're rubbing the back of the calf. Paul Wilson replaces him. Gibson against Wilson now. Deep on the wing. Needs some help. Gets it down low. Douglas turnaround jumper. Won't drop. Look at the rebound battle. Perry, the freshman, has it in his trip. And a foul is going to be called against Jerry Thomas. Good break right there for Memphis State when that ball caromed off the back of the rim. Standing right there to grab it was Elliot Perry. He picked it up and got a tripping foul. Now he goes to the line. Very important point right there. Memphis State's players doing a great job. Sometimes you can't grab the ball, but just keep the thing alive. Keep it alive. You never know who's going to get in position to pull it down. And that time, Elliot Perry was there to grab it. Hawkins back in the lineup now for Bradley. Elliot Perry. Six feet tall, a freshman on the line for the first time tonight. Five for eight this year. It's a two-point lead for Bradley now with a minute 35 to play. You see Perry telling what defense they're going to get in. He has a half dozen rebounds in this game. He's one of those guys just always around the ball. Well, he reminds me of Johnny Dawkins a little bit. He's left-handed. He's got yep. the same type of movement. Good lateral speed. Elliot Perry hits them both. He has eight points. One point lead, Bradley, 132 to play. Thomas gives it up to Manuel. Gibson defending against Anthony Manuel. Hawkins back in there. Douglas defending him. Perry's out on Treppy in a mismatch, and Treppy's not going to take him low. He's going to set up a three point ring. Got it. Oh, what a shot. Treppy with his sixth three point goal of the night. He had a mismatch in size. Instead of going under with his man, he went down to three point range. Now Memphis State's going to call a timeout. They're down four points here. A minute eight left in this game after Trippy's three. It's now 96-92. Bradley, we'll be right back. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half tons with their best automatics and half ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon course handling, full-size Chevy V4, level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 V4. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now, get $500 cash back on new full-size CK pickups. It's the day Chevy truck. Why do so many people choose GMAC financing to get the GM car or truck of their dreams? GMAC makes it easy. You do it all right at your GM dealers. And we make it easy on your budget with rates and terms to fit your needs. Don't just dream about a new GM car or truck. See your GM dealer about GMAC financing. GMAC! 
official sponsor of America's Dreams. And let's get back to Memphis coming down the stretch now in a very tight game. DePaul in Washington is our action tomorrow evening at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Three points keep you in the game. Let's see what can happen. Back to Fred White. Bradley by four after Trevor Trippi's three-point goal, his sixth three-pointer of the night. He has 20 points. One of the kind of out of players you're going to see a big man make. Well, in most cases like that, when you're running out of time, you want to try to force the ball to the inside to perhaps draw a foul. Trippi was running to the bench. He says, give me the ball. I'll shoot this thing as far out as I can get, and he just about did. He had Elliot Perry, a 5'11 guard on him, or a six-footer, and instead of posting him, he took it outside and got the three. Gibson shot, long call, has it back, and he's fouled by Anthony Manuel. Four on Manuel. A minute left to play. Yeah, you had a comment earlier about Elliot Perry. I think Cheyenne Gibson's one of those players that seems to be where the ball is all the time, too. They've got two guards that just seem to pop up. If the ball's there, they're always around it. There's Manuel with a foul on Gibson. Cheyenne Gibson, Gibson plays bigger than 6'3". Big Nolan at the line. He is four for five. Look at five for seven at the line tonight. Three-point game now, with one minute exactly left to go in this game. 20 points for Cheyenne Gibson, his high for the year. Two-point ball game. Now Gibson trying to get after Manuel here. Manuel clears timeline, gets trapped, and Perry fouled him. What you want there, Fred, is good defensive pressure. You've got to get after the basketball, but you cannot commit the foul. Second foul on Elliott Perry in this ball game. Manuel is four for four on the line tonight with a dozen points. And he's now hit nine out of 12 free throws this year. Now Ronald McLean is going to check back in from Memphis State. Russell Young sits down. McLean of freshman replacing another freshman. Manuel with a one and one. His club up by 2.55 seconds to play. Big shot there. Big. And the bonus coming now. He could put Bradley up by four with 55 to play. You know, we've talked a lot about Hopkins tonight, and I'll tell you something. Anthony Manuel can play this game as well as anybody in that point position. He's got 10 assists tonight, which is exactly on his average for the year. They throw miss, and Thomas with a big save for Bradley. And a foul is going to go against Elliott Perry, who first fouled Manuel and then Stan Albeck. I, <laughs> he got got him I can guarantee you Manuel will shoot. <laughs> Albeck will not. <laughs> He got them both on the sidelines. I think in that case, I'd rather have Manuel to line anyway. I'm not too yeah. sure Stan could walk up there and shoot him. He'll tell you he could, though. <laughs> he got whacked pretty good over there. Manuel just hit one for two. He's back up. He's club up by three. Fourteen points now for Anthony Manuel. Could give him back to the odd point, too. Four point lead at the moment, 51 seconds to play. And got them both that time. Did Anthony Manuel now? Bradley up by five. 49 seconds left in the game. Timeout. Memphis State with 46 seconds left. Well, well you're you're going to have to go for a three somewhere pretty quick here. Yeah, you've got to make a choice. You've either got to go for it on this trip or take it the next trip. I'm not too sure I wouldn't go ahead and go for the two right now. Come back and throw my press at him again one more time to try to get him then drive that three later on. Well, then you've got to start looking for people to foul. Obviously, you don't want to foul Hersey Hawkins. Anthony Manuel just stepped up and hit three out of four. Trevor Trempe has hit six out of seven this year. Well, it depend on who they put back in that game. Obviously, if Jackson gets his hands on the ball, you're going after him immediately. Uh, perhaps Powell, if he's in the game. That's about the only two right now that I'll, when I look down the list are really the two guys that go after. You know, Luke Jackson is three for 17 this year, although he's hit two for two in this ball game. Still, he's the guy you've got to take the chance of putting on there. But I'm going to doubt if you see much of him. 
What are the performance of these two clubs tonight? Mitch to say, with all this adversity and all the problems they've had all week, losing both Gray and Alexander, they came out and played an outstanding game, and they got a lot of help from the guys out front. I think their they're young freshmen and their first-year players have really performed exceedingly well. But on the other side, I look at Bradley. I see a basketball team, and I can see why they're ranked as the number one team in the Missouri Valley Conference. They've got great talent. They've got probably one of the best guards in the country. Percy Hawkins. I'm very impressed with Anthony Manuel. He's another one I think that can really control this uh, the flow of this game. If they can get good production out of their inside people, I think Stan Albeck's going to go a long way with this Bradley club. Even the night Bradley's had on the line. Both of them really. Memphis State shot it well. Bradley's just been better. John McLaughlin, the freshman in the lineup now for Memphis State. He's their three-point shooter. Jackson is still in the lineup for Bradley, by the way. Perry goes to work. They've got Gibson set up for three. Can't get the shot. Perry does go for three on the rim. One drop. And the board battle fought and won by Bradley. A foul is going to go against Memphis State. It's Ballard on the back. No, McLean. It's McLean. It looks well, like McLean. It. Yeah. Now 37 seconds left. Perry got it off, and he got it up there pretty easily. But you're going to see right here McLean come right in on the back of Bradley. He hit two guys. Looks like Hawkins is the one who got the rebound. Well, this isn't exactly where you pick a guy out to foul, but they got the wrong guy anyway. They got Hersey Hawkins in that melee down there. Luke Jackson was up there. He went over his back, but they're going to put Hawkins on the line. Hersey Hawkins has had an outstanding night. We know how many points he's got. Yeah, he's going to be close to a triple-double today. Whew. 32 points now for Hersey Hawkins. Nine rebounds and six assists. So heck of a night. Looking for his 33rd point. Bradley leading 100 to 94. Make it 101 94. Braves up by seven. 35 seconds to play. Gibson going for the three. Cheyenne Gibson with a quick three pointer. Now, four point lead. And a foul at midcourt called against Cheyenne Gibson. It's going to be a one and one. 26 seconds to play. Bradley by four. Twenty-four point night for Cheyenne Gibson. It's Anthony Manuel on the line. Fifteen points for Manuel tonight, make it sixteen. One That's two to ninety-seven. That's two. clutch free throw shooting right there, Fred. You got to walk up there and make those. And you know, when you start back on October the fifteenth. Yes, Dan Albeck had an interesting comment to me today. He says, you know, the colleges really start very early with their practices. And, you know, they start playing the plays by the no by November the 1st. Everybody knows everybody else where they're going to be on the floor. So I'm not too sure they shouldn't start practicing a little bit later. Anthony Manuel hits them both. 24 seconds left. Gibson trips, falls, trying to save the ball, does. Douglas McLean for three. Got it. Look out. Eight points McLean. Ooh, almost a turnover there by Bradley. Ten seconds to play, three-point lead to Bradley, and a foul is called against Elliott Perry with nine seconds to play, and Bradley leading by three, and if Bradley misses the free throw here, you got a chance to tie the ball game, does Memphis State. Fourth foul on Elliott Perry. All right, you got four guys out there that can shoot that three-point goal. You got McLean, who just made one, McLaughlin, who's a good three-point shooter. You got Cheyenne Gibson, and you've got Elliott Perry. Any one of those four is capable of taking that shot. 15 out of 16 free throws tonight for Hersey Hawkins. He missed. Memphis State with a chance to tie. Here Perry goes. racing. McLaughlin. McLaughlin for three to tie it. We're going to overtime. <laughs> what a ball game. Look at the joy in the Memphis State bench. We're going to overtime. John McLaughlin, the freshman from Monticello, Indiana, with his only points of the night, a three from the deep corner. Listen to the crowd in here. Watch the crowd in here. I said any one of four people could take this shot. Watch Elliott Perry. McLaughlin streaking through the corner. Here it comes. He sees him, and he goes straight up and got three people right there. Almost. Yes, sir. Nothing but the bottom. Watch it again. Elliott Perry with a good pass. Right into the corner. John McLaughlin standing there. Good square. And nothing but the bottom of the net. Oh, 
Well, it was shocked enough when Hersey Hawkins missed from the free throw line. He had a 50 out of 16 attempts in his ballgame. There have been 19 lead changes and 11 ties. It is 103-103, and we will go to overtime in the Mid-South Coliseum. Whew. What a night. And all Hawkins had to do was make one free throw. What amazing. You can't fall in, though. He has had an outstanding basketball game tonight. He's had 16 out of 18 free throw attempts in this ball game. So he was 16 out of 17 when that one went up. I tell you, if they ever make Hoosier 2, I've got the guy they can put in there to play one of the character actors. Who is a Hoosier? <laughs> From Monticello, Indiana. A little resort area, Shape of Lake up there. It's a little overtime, and why not? You know what this game is like? It's like a really good meal or something you're enjoying. You don't want it to end for a while yet. Let's watch some more basketball if it's going to be this good. Well, we're getting ready to have the after-dinner coffee right now. You guys are going to line it up again. I'll tell you what, everybody's got five minutes left to them after this. He's still fired up, John McLaughlin along the bench. He's pumped. He's out of the ball game now. He did his job and got him into the overtime. And now substitutions. And Hersey Hawkins is back out there. He's battling leg cramps, but he's back in the ball game. So here we go to the five-minute overtime and a 103 tie. Douglas from Memphis State to Perry to Gibson. Good heavens, they came from seven back in that last minute, Larry. Great comeback by Memphis State. I told you this earlier, it's tough to beat them in this place. Bailey, turnaround jumper, in and out. Had it back, lost it. Loose in the corner, picked up by Ronald McLean. Off balance and lost it, and a foul is called. Against Jerry Thomas. What's the foul again? Good move right here, down on the baseline, and it's a good turn there by Ronald McLean. You can see right there Thomas with the foul. McLean went to the deck. It's an interesting alignment the way Memphis State lines up on these free throws. They put their two guards down underneath, which are Perry and uh, Cheyenne Gibson. And, uh, it's almost a key, the tip-off, that they're going straight to a press out of this because you put the two of guys up there. Perry kept it alive that time, Larry <laughs> Or maybe it's because he's the best rebounder they've got. <laughs> Perry got the hand on it. He and Gibson are just amazing at getting to the basketball. Douglas partially blocked that time. Bailey got a hand on it, and it's picked up this time by Thomas for Bradley. Still tied at 103. Memphis State had the ball for 47 seconds, got nothing out of it. Hawkins to Manuel. Off balance, lost the ball in length. Oh, they've got Ronald McLean all alone. <laughs> Ten points for Ronald McLean. Two-point lead Memphis State. 350 left in the overtime. Nobody back that time. Memphis State gets a funny. Boy, that's an easy one to get. You love those kinds. Uncontested, nobody around, and now Memphis State's in that zone, and Hawkins says, let me have it. Hawkins drilled a three from the deep corner. 36 points for Hersey Hawkins. Now I figured it out why Hersey missed their free throw. He didn't have his average, right? <laughs> 106, 105, Bradley, 325 left in the overtime. Douglas, Perry. You get the feeling looking at Bradley, they look a little tired? I think so. Yeah, I'm just I'm looking at them right now. They look a little bit tired, and it shows more on defense than anything. Good pass, Hawkins with a steal. Boy, that was a great steal. Hawkins took it out of there, had Thomas down court, but he couldn't get the ball to him. So Bradley now with a one-point lead and the basketball with three minutes left in the overtime. Manuel being overplayed by Perry, but gives the ball up. Krempe setting up out of three-point range, so as Hawkins, it's up. It's off the heel of the rim. And Perry has the rebound again. Gibson in the circle, going to take the layup, and a foul is called. Hawkins is four. That's Hawkins four. Gibson. Oh, he might have hurt his ankle. Watch Gibson on this break. It's a three-on-two break. He looks left. A little bit of a fake. No one took it. And Hawkins came right in on him as he started up to the basket. I think it's a, he's got a cramp 
in his cap, too, and they don't want the trainer to come out there because he has to come out of the game, so guess what? Perry has done everything else tonight. <laughs> now I'm going to be the trainer for a while, and it worked. He did his job. <laughs> Elliot Perry <laughs> has done everything. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want you out of the ball game. This Hawkins has been fighting cramps, too. He's hobbling around over by the bench. No one, that, you'd have cramps if you played in this game. Gibson's free throw, good. Cheyenne Gibson has 25 points in this contest. It's tied at 106, 247 to play. Gibson, for the lead, gets it for Memphis State. 26 points now for Cheyenne Gibson. Tigers up by one, 242 to play. Trippy. Manuel. Blocked. Bailey picks it off the floor. Well, good block. I think Douglas was the one who got his hand on that. It was. He and Bailey were there. Douglas got it. Memphis stayed up by a point with the ball. 228 left in the overtime. The plane handling it out top. Put in the hands of that guy. He does everything else for him. They're looking around. They're going to move that ball around a little bit. They want to take advantage of this. Right now, they're up by one, and they're in no hurry. What's Perry? A little one-on-one? -on -one? No, nope, he's going to try to get it to Bailey. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Perry, great move at the baseline, and he drilled it. How about that fake? Elliot Perry has 10. Memphis State up by three with a minute 49 left in the overtime. There goes Hawkins. No, it didn't have it. I thought he was going to try to take it in the inside. They got their shooters aligned to three-point range. There's Trimpey. There's Manuel. Now they run Hawkins out of the ball. Tipped by Douglas out of bounds. It'll be Bradley basketball. 26 seconds on their shot clock. And Bradley wants timeout here. A minute 36 left in the overtime period in the Mid-South Coliseum. You're looking at all the basketball you'd want to see. 109, 106, Memphis State leading Bradley. Don't go away. Okay, everybody, dinner break. Yeah. One of all your holiday activities with something new. McDonald's Holiday Chicken McNuggets. In festive 9 and 20 piece packs. Tasty chunks of chicken and two new sauces. Tang cranberry with a twist of orange. And sweet apple spiced with cinnamon. Better chime in. Before holiday McNuggets are gone. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? USAC tested standard half tons with their best automatics and half ton payloads. Zero to 60, 40 to 55, pylon course handling, full size Chevy V4, level and uphill towing acceleration. Chevy with Vortec V6 V4. Which truck should you be driving? USAC test just answered it. Now get $500 cash back on new full size CK pickups. It's today's Chevy truck. I don't think it would matter where you live. If you're watching this ball game tonight, you have to be enjoying this basketball game. Anybody that stayed up this late, we're going on a quarter of 12 Eastern time right now. You've got to be a basketball fan. I tell you, these, I haven't seen anybody in this crowd leave yet. You know, Bradley has fought very hard playing on the road at a very difficult place to play, and you really have to take your hat off to the Braves. On the other hand, we documented the problems of Memphis State losing two of their outstanding players prior to the game, and you have to take your hat off to the Tigers for the effort they've given. We said before the game, in cases like this, Larry, you've seen it before, a player rise to the occasion. Dwayne Bailey has done that tonight. Certainly, as has Dwight Boyd for Memphis State, along with Perry and Gibson and McLean and all the others. Luke Jackson, he's a man they want to play if they're going to, but it's a little too early for that. A minute 29 left in the overtime. Well, you get a three-point lead right now. All you want to do is think about playing defense. Is it him again? No, nope. it is. Now you sit on it. Now you sit on it. And Bradley's got to come after it. They've got to come after it and play tough defense. Here goes Hawkins against Gibson. A minute 10 left in the overtime. McLean outside. You gotta watch a five second call now. You gotta be very careful if you're on offense. You wanna keep the ball moving. If you get that five second or close to it, pick up the ball and hold it. You get an extra four. 59 seconds left in the overtime. 20 on the shot clock. Memphis State, three point lead in the ball. Fires in the corner and misses. Does McLean. He was fouled by Jerry Thomas. An ill advised foul. 
First off, I want to know why McLean shot. And secondly, I want to know why Thomas fouled. Watch this. McLean is open in the corner, but that's a tough shot. And there's Thomas right on top of his arm. Both coaches probably saying why. The pinch is going to get the better of this. Third foul for Thomas. He's replaced now in the lineup by Paul Wilson. Ronald McLean at the free throw line. A 6'8 freshman from Horn Lake, Mississippi. Ten points tonight. Just his only a free throw attempt. This game and for the year. 52 seconds left in the overtime. Memphis State up three. He's got to make one of these. He's got to keep that four-point lead. Otherwise, the mad bomber, Trimpey, will be back. <laughs> four-point lead it is. Ronald McLean has 11 now. Four-point lead Memphis State, 45 seconds to play. Wilson, Manuel. Good defense by Memphis State. Trempy against Douglas. Picked up that time by Gibson. Hawkins in the lane. Good. Whoa, what, what a shot. shot. What a shot. 38 points now for Hersey Hawkins. Two-point lead. 24 seconds to play. Great feed to Gibson, and he's fouled by Paul Wilson. Elliot Perry. And Cheyenne Gibson. What a combination. Here we come, right side, no, yeah, right side of the basket right here. You're going to see Perry with a good bounce pass, gets him with a break. Trimpy trying to get there. There's the foul committed on the inside by Paul Wilson. Cheyenne Gibson, what a big night he's had, 26 points. He's at 9 out of 11 free throw attempts in this game. Big points. Three-point lead at Memphis State. 22 seconds left in the overtime. All right, again, now you've got to have that four-point cushion. This home run really makes a difference, that three-point goal. Four-point lead, Memphis State. 22 seconds to play in the overtime. And Cheyenne Gibson with 28 points in this ballgame. You got a lot of chicken scratching on that pool there. <laughs> I mean, when we just bucked when the game is over. Recapping is going to be out of the play. It's just so much fun to just sit back and watch two basketball teams play like this any time of the year. But this is a December ball game. We've been doing college basketball games for a number of years, and I can't remember in recent years of December where I've seen more good college basketball than this year. And I think that really points out one thing. I think we've got a lot of good college basketball teams out there this year. Not one or two that are going to dominate. I think you've got 15 to 20 different college teams out there that can really step up at the end of the year and take the whole thing home from Kansas City. You know, and Larry, living in Kansas City, I'd like to say something, fans around the country, that city is really gearing up for the final four. It's the 50th anniversary. It started in Kansas City, and that city is just going all out. It's going to be a magnificent year for the final four. They're doing so many special teams now. Fans now have a chance to vote for their all-time top five players in the final four. It's going to be an outstanding final four this year. And an easy ticket to get. Oh, boy. <laughs> Camp Arena seats 17,000 people. Back to this one. Why are we thinking Final Four? Just because of the caliber of play here tonight. 112, 108, Memphis State. 22 seconds left in the ballgame. You're missing the balance around the country. How many teams people projecting the Final Four already have taken a loss or two this year? Well, they really have. I think they've had four different teams assume that number one position since the season started and four of them have been knocked out. One of them has lasted two weeks and that one is still there and it's Kentucky. Stan Albeck, Bradley Bench. Well, that's a man that's had a great coaching career. He's been around a lot. 23 years of coaching. Trempe will play it inbounds. Memphis State applying full court pressure. 22 seconds left in the overtime. Memphis State by four. Ready Daniel. and quick. Daniel, top of the circle. Stolen by Gibson. Picked off by Douglas. Nine seconds left. Memphis State with a basketball. And McLaughlin is in there now. Is fouled with four seconds left. John McLaughlin has played about five seconds tonight, and he's done a couple of things pretty well. 
Stan Albeck a little bemused. His club has played well. And he ran into an emotional ball club here tonight. John McLaughlin. Four points on the night to McLaughlin, all four of them big. That's a five-point lead to Memphis State. It was his three at the gun that put this thing in overtime. Len Bertolini in the game now for Bradley. Off the rim it comes. Two seconds left. Manuel fires the Bertolini but past the one count for goes. This thing is over. Memphis State has won it. 113 to 108 in overtime. We have seen a lot of basketball here in Rook at the Joy in the Mid-South Coliseum. Larry Finch with handshakes for the Bradley players. Quite a ball game. Overtime battle and Memphis State wins it 113-108 from Bradley. A lot of emotion in the air tonight at the Mid-South Coliseum. Sylvester Gray and Marvin Alexander having been declared ineligible because they signed early with sports agent Jim Abernathy. And this was the first game they were out. Larry Finch's team coming in number 19 in the country. Undermanned, though, without those two players and an NBA-style victory. 113-108 to in overtime. What a night. And also a look at the nation's top scorer, Hersey Hawkins. What's coming up? Well, tomorrow evening we've got action from Washington, from Seattle to Paul. And the Washington Huskies getting along at 11 Eastern time. It'll be Friday evening tomorrow night, live on ESPN. One score of note, congratulations to the Bear, Don Haskins, who tonight racked up his 500th career victory as UTEP defeated Lamar 87-56, to and he becomes, that is Don Haskins, the 20th Division I coach to achieve 500 career victories. Once again, our final score tonight from the Mid-South Coliseum, it was a track meet as Memphis State defeated Bradley by the count of 113-108. to We'll see you tomorrow night. Action for the call in Washington, 11 Eastern Time. I'm Bob Lee.